Welcome to the Heavy Debriefings Podcast. We are Josh Hornquist and the Metal Fairy. A fun-loving metal couple that brings you the best in new music. What did you just make me listen to? As well as movies. Three hours later, nothing of value was added. TV. It's going good, so why not cancel it? Video games. Here's an idea. Remake the game, but make it worse. Wrestling. Why are we still watching this week after week? And all things entertainment. I knew it. I knew she was behind Black Guy Games. And a little insight into our personal lives. You don't mind that I trauma dump on you, do you? Uh, emotional support girlfriend, party one. He's a handsome fella. I know, you keep telling me. We're made for each other, because no one else would have us. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, this is Josh Ronquist here for the Heavy Debriefings Podcast, episode 67. And just coming home after her bi-weekly excursion, it is... The Metal Fairy, aka The Flea. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. I didn't sleep the best last night, so I'm a little tuckered out, but I got some stuff done for the show this weekend, for this episode and future ones, and you know, I'm, I, I have a little bit of energy in me right now, so I am I am ready to do this. Alright, well I'm really glad to hear that. It's good to have you home. It's been a very rough week week yeah um, especially over the past eight days now it's been uh, quite yeah. rough but uh i'm glad to have you back here and hopefully putting on a darn good show uh for accountability 101 we will be uh doing our double shot of metal church part two where we talk about the human factor uh we'll be doing hot sexy singles and uh out today and what i missed at the end of the show we got our blind rankings uh we have another segment that um mm-hmm. might keep hidden unless you just look at chapters <laughs> yes. <laughs> and of course, all the news and what we've been up to and all that good stuff. So I guess we'll start with you. Uh, yeah. Any Anything you've been doing? Not a whole lot on my end. I've still been playing Vampire Survivors on my phone. How is off. it? It's fun. It's fun. But it's definitely hard. <laughs> like, I'm at a point now where like there's some things where I have like a certain number of like people or I have to, um, I think, like open up certain, I don't know if it's weapons or what it is because it doesn't necessarily say specifically what it is is um but i i don't know exactly what they are i suppose like a google app to help make it a little bit easier but um it, it's still fun as can be but it, it's definitely a little challenging too <laughs> it is but once you hit that moment where you find out like how all the combinations work you figure out mm-hmm. what works for best for you what characters work best for you it just turns into gravy it just yeah it's so satisfying when you're able to kill hundreds upon hundreds of them at a time <laughs> it is fun and there's one there's one level that i have to reach level 20 in order to open up another character and I keep getting to 19 and a half minutes or sorry 20 minutes not level 20 19 and a half minutes and then it just kills me (laughs) and you're also doing this on your phone as well so I can only Mm -hmm. imagine how much harder that is for you to be able to pull off like I feel like if you had a controller things would be a little bit easier for you that could be but I'm not noticing any challenges with the phone so yeah but it's something to try try. maybe it's just because my phone is lagging all the time now then again my phone's from 2019 and we're almost in 2025 so you know it's <laughs> tiktok yeah i i do need to upgrade that at some point um for stuff just pretty much involving me uh, i've been spending the last few days playing the game ender lilies which is a uh, really dark metroidvania uh it was available for free from um, playstation a couple months back and i'm giving it a shot now after i got done finishing some other stuff and i'm really enjoying it it's a really dark sad story but uh, the gameplay is really satisfying um it's difficult not unfair uh you just basically have to as the kids used to say get good (laughs) and the more that you get good uh the more satisfying it feels and stuff like that um for especially for a free game i think that also came out when fight forever uh, was free (laughs) nice as well um i did get it but i did not install it and i did not uh, play it at all yeah yeah. but um yeah i think uh, that was two of the three games at time um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm playing this one. Um, uh, it feels like I'm getting towards the end. Like the bosses just feel like they've really gone up in, uh, difficulty. But, um, once you learn the patterns and stuff like that, it gets a little bit easier, but you still have to get good. Yeah. And just from watching it, it does look like a really fun game. Like it definitely has hints of like Hollow Knight or, um, Little Nightmares. Little Nightmares. Little Nightmares. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like a cute, fun, but hard game. <laughs> yeah. And it's definitely the Metroidvania, you know, where, um, you unlock different parts of the maps and you get different 
weapons and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if you like that kind of stuff, I'd recommend it. I, I think it goes for pretty cheap if you didn't get it through PlayStation a couple months back. So yeah. yeah. Um, um, also think, in the gaming world, uh, we downloaded. Well, I was going to say, I oh, think yeah. that's it for what we've done separately. Separately, yes. Yeah. Mm. So now we can get into the stuff that we've done together. Yeah. So Friday was it? I believe we downloaded uh, the new Retro Realms, which is uh, kind of old school Nintendo esque versions of Halloween and Ash versus Evil Dead. Yes. Um. They. It is fifty bucks or twenty five a piece. Um. If you get them combined for fifty, you also get the bonus characters that go along with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Otherwise, I saw they were five a piece. So you're saving another ten bucks exactly. if you just get them together. You're saving a little bit. Yeah. Um. Before I get into my thoughts, what were your thoughts on the brief fifteen minutes that yeah. I played uh, <laughs> Halloween? What did yeah. you think? Yeah. I just saw a little bit of Halloween, so I haven't seen Ash versus Evil Dead yet. But I think it looks super fun. I mean, definitely you have to be into Halloween and Ash versus Evil Dead. Otherwise, it'll probably be a little lost on you. But like just being able to, you know, play as those characters and, you know, play this little side scroller where you're, you know, killing people and just kind of all kinds of crazy stuff. It's fun. It's fun. It's exactly what you'd want to like an arcade type game, you know? Yeah, I think that's a really fair assessment of it. Yeah, it's definitely the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis style games. Also, like uh, the grand elaborate IO of or IU of all of it is um, it starts off as like a 3D arcade that's abandoned and you have these two arcade consoles that you can choose between Halloween yes. or Ash vs. Evil Dead but I noticed there's some other arcade cabinets there that oh. have cloths over them which makes me think that they're going to be adding more to this collection at some point. That would be so cool if it ends up being like a whole like arcade where you could just go in and just select you want to play. Well I imagine it would be like the similar kind of game. Uh, well to give it away uh, both games play exactly the same. Yeah. Like, um, there's not a lot different to them at all outside of the sprites looking different, the location, stuff like that. It's basically the same games, but they're both really, really fun. Challenging, like they were back in the day. Yeah. But, um, it'd be so cool if they added more IPs to all this. Like, what if you got to play Candyman? Oh, I was just thinking that video Candyman game, that'd be amazing. Like, I want a Nightmare on Elm Street. I want a Leprechaun game. Oh, that would be fun. Ginger be Dead Man. Hilarious. Oh! <laughs> Oh, yeah, girl, yes. Get Gary Busey to do the voice Gary Busey. Gary Busey. He's free. You know he's free. Of course he's free. <laughs> He'll take anything that's available right now if exactly. anyone offers him something. Exactly. But yeah, there's so many good ones they could do, and that would be amazing. But, yeah. State. but yeah, if you love that old school style, the, the 2D left to right, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, old school arcade, and Sega Genesis stuff, like I highly recommend it if you're into horror. Absolutely. Uh, we also watched a few things this week. Oh. <laughs> Oh, did we ever. <laughs> so a couple uh, TV shows that we uh, watched the new, newest episode of. Uh, we watched the newest Agatha all along. Yeah. Um, Wiccan is finally here. Yes. Yes. Um, we, well, we should actually talk about uh, both episodes since we didn't see Agatha That's right. we until didn't see uh, we got back from a little excursion last weekend. Yes. But um, basically in the past two episodes, Wiccan has come off. If you're not familiar with Wiccan, it is one of the sons of Scarlet Witch. Mm-hmm. And um, some things are about to hit the fan in the last two episodes, it really feels like. Yeah, it's going to get crazy, I think. But how is it going to get crazy? That is the real question. Yeah, yeah. I, I Again, I am thoroughly enjoying this. Like... <sighs> I've talked about in previous, like in the previous episodes before these two, like it really got into like Wicca a little bit more in general and stuff and like a lot of nods to like other, you know, uh, movies, TV, etc. that have shown Wicca throughout the years, which I absolutely love. And now it's getting deeper with the story, which is cool because obviously the reason we're there to begin with is because we love like the story of the comics and stuff like that and kind of seeing what their interpretation of it is. And it's getting deep and deep and it's getting crazy and I I'm just perplexed where it's going to be in the next couple episodes. <laughs> yeah, same here. Um, it really did start off as like a pure Wizard of Oz parody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now they've added a lot more to it, but I still feel like at the end, it's going to wrap up like Wizard of Oz as well to remind you what's actually going on. Yeah. And I would say not like uh, if you're a fan of it, if you're not a fan of Wizard of Oz, don't let that skew you because it's not like Wizard of Oz can be seen as a little hokey. Let's be 
honest. And I don't. Well, feel... it's something from almost a hundred years ago. Right. You know? Right. 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 Like, well, this. Well, Ava all along does have some comedic elements to it. It's also very dark at the same time. It definitely takes. It's a diff- quite dark. It, it's a definitely a different vibe than the original Wizard of Oz. So don't let that skew you. <laughs> it's a rainbow show. Don't don't get this misconstrued. It is a rainbow show. Like it celebrates LGBTQ plus. Amazingly, yes. But it is quite dark. It is especially absolutely. for Disney. It's quite dark, mm-hmm. and it's the first full frontal butt that we've seen in the MCU as well. <laughs> in the very first episode, yes. I didn't think that was ever going to happen. I know, right? <laughs> But on the other side Mm -hmm. of the uh, super villain TV shows, we also watched the halfway point of The Penguin. Yes, we did. Um, Hangman needs to win an Emmy. (sighs) Yes. Oh. It, uh, episode four was basically like the origins of how Sophia became known as the hangman. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily being the hangman, but how it happened. Yeah. And just seeing this spoiled rich kid turn into an absolute psycho yeah. is just, it, it's it's Emmy bait. Like, this deserves an Emmy. Well, then she even, deserves an Emmy. And even more than that, like, yeah, she was spoiled, but she still like wanted to do good in the world. Um, There was some good in there and it showed through absolutely but then you take her and you put her in a position i'm not going to get into detail detail but you put her in a position where she's tormented we'll just say that as the most light way we could put it like and what that can do to a person and i'm sorry but she is 100 justified go sophia go hangman <laughs> sophia falcone is um uh, depending on how you look at it maybe the hero of the whole story yeah i mean it, it's strange but yeah it's true <laughs> but is it penguin is he the anti-hero that we all know and love is he the <sighs> real villain is he the hero yeah well and that's the thing with him too it's such a complex story on that end too because it's like you should hate him but then there's things that aren't hateable either it's like where are my feelings supposed to be <laughs> and i've talked about this a few times throughout the course of uh bringing the podcast back yeah and i think this is just a perfect example of how every character doesn't just need to be good or bad no because i mean the more at- complex they are the more yeah. real it is yeah well that's what i was just gonna say like i mean look at human beings i mean obviously there's examples in history that are we're pretty much evil or bad um but for the most part like they, it, nobody's 100 evil or 100 good like there's a rich tapestry in all of us we're all a shade of gray we are but uh yeah as uh we're rec- recording this in about four hours as we're recording this will be the next episode of the penguin i always forget on sunday nights and now i just got super excited yeah <laughs> Yeah, we got the second half starting off tonight. Mm. The fact that this might be only one season really rips me apart. (sighs) Because yeah. I don't want this to stop. No. Like, I said it for the very first episode. This is the DC I've wanted. Yeah. And yeah, yeah it's a side villain. I understand that. But they make it so intriguing that you just want to keep tuning in every single week. Yeah. Like, and if they could do that with the rest of the rogues gallery, I'm sold. Mm-hmm. Like, you could do a live action Poison Ivy. You could do a live action Mr. Freeze. Oh, yeah. Joker has been done to death. I think you need to put Joker away for a few years uh, before you try yeah. it again. Yeah. Especially since uh, your opinions have changed on the movie since uh, we last did the podcast. Uh Um, We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, just like all of the rogues gallery could have side shows like this. Yeah. And I'd be sold for every single one of them if it can be as intriguing as the Penguin is. Am I wrong in feeling that way? Not at all. And what I was going to say is that with the Penguin, like even if you're out there and you don't know anything about Marvel, you don't know anything about the Penguin, about It's DC. Sorry, DC. (laughs) Uh, excuse me there for a second it's not actually Marvel it's a, it's DC I hope I get in trouble for this blunder it's, it's, it's a detective comic but no my point is if like if you're not a comic book person at all this is just an amazing show period like it's not your typical superhero where like they're wearing capes and flying around this is like real people just with elevated status and but in an amazing amazing story with depth and craziness and like every Thing you could want in like a crime drama dark emotional package or if you want to look at it from another angle it's the sopranos set in gotham city fine i'll take it i never watched the sopranos so i can't speak we might to have to myself. change that at some point let's do it let's do it i'm not gonna say you're gonna love it yeah and yeah. um it has one of the worst endings in television history i've heard i've heard it's terrible but uh family guy made fun of it for one episode as well yeah i forgot what it is but i, I know i heard about it at one point good because if we do watch <laughs> it i want you to forget i want you to forget what yeah. that ending is 
is. Yeah. So, but regardless, though, like I'll take it. I'll take it, and anybody out there should take it as well. Even again, even if you don't know who the penguin is, block this. Yeah, and again, how is that Colin Farrell? I kind of don't believe it is. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I believe it from the acting skill because I know he's a good actor. But like, no, this guy did not date Britney Spears back in the day. And um, the rest of the uh, what was that fire fire book? I forgot what, what did they call Lindsay Lohan? Fire crotch. Fire crotch. That's what it was. <laughs> I was going to say fire bush, but <laughs> close. <laughs> that works. <laughs> but you know, all of them hung together in the early to mid 2000s and Colin Farrell was there. And, yeah. Uh, he yeah. had his way with all of them. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even a probably. <laughs> but no, um, just going through all of that and coming out the other side to be one of the most intriguing DC villains yeah. in the 2020s. Mm-hmm. Absolutely insane. Insane. <laughs> What else we uh, got uh, that we've watched? Yeah, so one Because more... it only goes downhill from here. Yeah, one more <laughs> thing. We watched a movie. We watched a part No, 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 no. What? We, we oh. watched two movies. Did we watch another one? I missed one? Well, let's talk about the first movie, and then I'll segue into the second movie. Okay, well, we watched Apartment 7A, which if you're not familiar, this is- Oh, pre- we watched two other movies. Where is my mind? Okay, well- Okay, uh... Pixies. Where is my mind? <laughs> exactly. So if you're not familiar with Apartment 7A, it is a uh, prequel to Rose Mary's baby. And of course, what takes place in apartment 7A? Um, well, so this is... No, I meant the actual apartment. What do you mean? I guess I don't know where you're going with it. Who lives in apartment 7A? Well, this girl moves into it. Are you... Okay. The other two. I thought she moved into apartment 7A. No, she was in 7G. Oh, okay. Then I... Okay. Whatever. Uh, details, but yes. And once um... you know what, that's also a Simpsons reference because Homer works at sector 7G. <laughs> I can always tie it back into the Simpsons somehow. But uh, yes, continue But on. yes, uh, if you've seen Rosemary's Baby, the older couple that be friends Rosemary and Guy uh, Roman. They're the ones who live in apartment 7A. Okay. Um, Roman and um, oh gosh. I Minnie. Forgot. Minnie. Thank you. Um, yes, they live in that apartment. It's one of your favorite movies and I'm the one that's telling you. What... I've never paid attention to the apartment numbers in the past. No, well, you, you got Minnie wrong too. So. No, I forgot her name, but I got Roman. I, okay. I just forgot her name. Okay. Toots. Anyways, um, yes, this movie um, essentially uh, goes a little bit earlier uh, prior to to when um, Rosemary and Guy move into the, well, it, it leads up to the the timing when they moved into the apartment building, I guess. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it follows the uh, woman who um, Minnie and Roman befriended prior to Rosemary and Guy, and um, stuff happens. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll put it this way. Yeah. The first, the, the prequel transitions into Rosemary's Baby. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go see both movies. Yeah. If you do know know what I'm talking about that's either intriguing or not intriguing to you yeah yeah to me I've been stewing on this one for a while like I really like that they told this story Mm -hmm. but I wish they told a different story because you were kind of wanting to see maybe like the beginning of uh, Minnie and Roman or how yeah how did they how did how did they find the occult yeah how did the occult come to this apartment building and everything like that yeah that would have been way more interesting to me I understand to me it kind of feels like they told the same story twice whereas I would have wanted to see the origins of how this all came about. But that's just me. Yeah. For me, like, I totally get that. Like, I still enjoyed seeing this because I always wondered being a fan of the original Rosemary's Baby minus shadiness of the director and everything, but... You mean how uh, you mean how he named himself after one of the main characters? You know, you know. That's I, it? He didn't do anything else? Yeah, did nothing else, nothing else. Um... <laughs> But I've always wondered the story of this character from the be- uh, from the original. So I thought it was very interesting seeing that. There are definitely a lot of parallels, you know, parts of it. It definitely are kind of telling the same story in certain ways. I will say, though, like, I loved the ending. And I mean, it was a hard ending to watch. Cause, Tell me about it. Because um, it deals with, you know, uh, well, it deals with hard, bad stuff to think about. Yeah. And, well, again, if you've seen, the, if you've seen at least the beginning of Rosemary's mm, Baby, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and and we've seen a lot of that in movies lately, which is it's hard to see. Um, well, I was gonna get into that, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but like, I just I love the way they did it, though. Like, and then the way they tied it into the beginning of Rosemary's Baby, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Love that part of it. But overall, like, it, again, parts of it were not necessarily needed, but it was interesting seeing this side, and I love the ending. That's where I'm at. Well, maybe they could do a prequel to the prequel. They could. They could. I would. I really want to see that. The Minnie and Roman story. Yeah. yeah. I, mm-hmm. You know, call it their last names. The 
Uh, I, now I'm blanking out on their last names now. Cassavetes. Yeah, you call it that, and it's how they became into the occult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to get to your point, and once you know it, it's also a, a topic that we'll be talking about later uh, when it comes to horror movies. Mm -hmm. There's so much self-harm and suicide in horror movies lately. Oh, yeah. And the overall theme is you're never going to overcome it. Guess on <sighs> who in this show has dealt with all of this <laughs> for almost their entire life. Yeah. Ten oh. suicide attempts, mm -hmm. trying to find a way to better themselves, trying to find a way to subside all of these feelings and everything, and then just constantly getting reminded that things aren't going to get better. Oh, yeah. Even if that's not true or false, but when you're just constantly reminded of that idea, it gets to be a little much. It weighs on you, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, you forgot about two other movies. Okay. Uh, first up, we have The Mousetrap. Oh, shoot. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that was in the past week. Yeah, oh, it sure was. Okay, yes. Um, do you want to go into this one? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> So, um, as you may not may know or not know, um, Mickey Mouse is in the public in domain. In the public domain now, so well, people, Steamboat Mickey is Steamboat Mickey. Yes, yeah. Um, so if people want to use his image and create movies, TV, whatever, out of it, they they can do that now. And somebody did, in a way. <laughs> They didn't want to make the best Mickey horror movie. They wanted to make the first Mickey horror movie. Mission accomplished. Now, we almost had high hopes because the beginning was making fun of Star Wars. Yeah, the, the intro was hilarious. It was the only good part of the entire movie. Yeah, it really was. It really was. Now, to just do an overall broad feeling of this, it all takes place in this fun center. Yeah, this arcade type place. And someone or someones starts wearing a Mickey mouse hat that happens to be in the back room mm -hmm. or a, ma a mickey mask and just starts slowly and i do mean slowly yeah. starting antagonizing everyone that's left in the building mm -hmm. uh almost all of the deaths are off screen yes except for one mm -hmm. at the very very end <laughs> yep i've seen better acting in adult movies um oh, i've seen 100%. i've seen a better comprehensive stories in winnie the pooh blood and honey 2 and you know from a couple weeks ago how much i freaking hated that movie winnie the pooh should win an oscar compared to these actors it, it's the godfather compared to yes this. it really is Oh, um, the, oh, the people involved, all of them sucked. There was not a good actor, actress in the entire bunch. No, no. And one of them that made me the most angry, and I kept saying throughout it as we we're MST3King this. Yes. Oh, I can't wait to see her die. Yeah. Doesn't die. No. Nope. <laughs> At least not on camera. Not, and... Well, it, it could be for the sequel. It could be for the sequel. It, it, because they sure as heck promoted the fact that they're working on a second yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was kind of alluded that she may be dead now, but we don't know for sure. Nothing is for sure. Yeah. And of course, there's this uh, overall arcing story. Like, almost all the movie is a flashback. And the other part of the movie takes place in a really fake Skinamax prison cell. Yes. <laughs> it's so terrible. And there's an after credit scene that happens as well, too, which basically gives away the fact that Minnie Mouse is going to be yes. <laughs> joining in the second movie. Steamboat Minnie. Steamboat Minnie. Um, yeah, it's... I'm glad we didn't go... I don't even know if this had a theatrical release, but I'm so glad we didn't waste money I, on this. I hope no creatures out there paid for this. <laughs> um, I'm amazed this thing even had a budget. It looks like it was rec it was all filmed in one... Maybe two nights, like one for the prison, two... Or for the jail, and the other one at the fun center. My I guess as one of the people working on this movie worked at that fun center and they just were able to use it one night after close. Yeah. Also, another thing to really keep in mind with all of this is this takes place in Canada and there's one, well, first of all, hockey is a huge thing that comes into this. Yes. Alcohol is another thing that comes into of this. Course, of course. But one of the characters just keeps talking in this very stereotypical Canadian <laughs> accent there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> And no one else in the he's movie the sounds one. he's the only one that sounds like that. Yes. It it's like when you watch other horror movies and it's it's like that one transplant kid that moves into the school. Yeah. And you wonder what he's all about. Yes. But no, this they they all grew up together and he's the only one that has this really thick Canadian accent there. All about. <laughs> What's this all about? <laughs> yeah. Um only watch this if you need something to make fun of. Don't yes. watch this thinking.
thinking it's going to be any good no, 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 at no, no. all. MST it, get yourself some snacks, maybe some alcohol, you know, plan accordingly. But that also wasn't the only Canadian horror movie that we watched in the past week. Okay. Because after we were done with this movie, I talked about how The Mousetrap might be one of the most insultingly bad horror movies oh. I've ever seen in my entire life. I totally forgot we watched this yes. in the past week. Too. And... <laughs> There's another movie that's regarded as the worst horror movie ever made, if not one of the worst movies ever made. And I just said to myself, there's no way this movie we're about to watch is anywhere near as bad as The Mousetrap. And which one are you talking about? Sorry, boot that! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it's the uh, the the movie debut of Johnny Depp's daughter and Kevin Smith's daughter yes. in Yoga Hosers. Yes. Uh, I avoided this movie for so long because I just heard how terrible this movie is. Mm -hmm. But I just, there was something in my mind that said, there's no way, <laughs> no way Yoga Hosers is worse than The Mousetrap. There's no way. No way there, bud. Um, I think I was right. Like, I enjoyed Yoga Hosers so much more than the mousetrap yes which insulted my intelligence but i mean here's here's the precaution i will put out there for the listeners if you're not into the kevin smith world that might not be the case for you yeah like, you have you... to be into the view askew verse you have to be yeah you have to know who kevin smith's friends are you have yep. to know like all the side stuff that's going on it also helps if you've watched tusk as mm -hmm. well because there's many references and characters from tusk also listening to kevin smith's podcast with ralph garman or ralph well, garman's podcast as well the ralph report the ralph report that helps as well i mean that's not made by kevin smith that's a no. separate entity but, but they do but they still have a show together called hollywood babylon yes yeah, so that they do roughly monthly it helps you to understand his personality and kind of get more of a kick out of it yeah because uh he shows up towards well he shows up a little bit in the middle but really towards the end and it's basically just like a highlight reel of why you should hire him to do your movies <laughs> basically it's like here's my portfolio or or voiceover work or whatever Yep. Um, all of that said, it's not a good movie. Oh, no. heavens no. First of all, I thought it was rated R. It's PG-13. So anything that they could have done to make this better had no chance because it was PG-13. Yes. Second, the story. <laughs> It is three-fourths like a coming-of-age teenage drama, and one-quarter Bratzies. What's a Bratzie? Well, once you know it, it's a Brat Sausage Nazi. Hey, what? Yeah. <laughs> Played by Kevin Smith. <laughs> so he can be in the same movie as his daughter. Um, also, uh, Elvis from Elvis is, is in this movie as well, too. Oh. I, I really don't understand how he got any more acting kicks after this movie. <laughs> But yeah, Austin Butler um, plays a high school senior uh, in grade 12. Yeah. I mean, it helps that he was a high school kid at this time, like teenager. So he, he was an adult making old adult decisions yet. <laughs> well, he was playing a senior. I'm pretty sure he was over 18. Maybe. Maybe not. Well, just like uh, Kevin Smith and Johnny Depp's daughters, like they were playing 15 and a half, but I'm pretty sure they were over 18. Maybe. But uh, that, that's something I'm just going off the top of my head because, well, look at 90210. Like, how long were they high school? school seniors for yeah. how old were they when they were high school seniors to begin with <laughs> that is true that is true that's all the point i'm trying to get at yeah but yeah yoga hosers does suck as a movie even a movie that starts off with an anthrax cover oh yeah they have a they have a band with this guy who looks like he's in his 40s playing the drums and they're 15 and a half well, yeah <laughs> called was... glamthrax yeah and that was um adam brody i think is his name he was in the oc back in the day and stuff yeah ichabod Ichabod, yes. <laughs> but um yeah um glamthrax um i wasn't <laughs> expecting them to do an anthrax cover in the beginning of no, it and no. it's also the worst anthrax song they covered as well too <laughs> which maybe that should have been a sign but um n now i have seen all the kevin smith movies yes um that would be fun to rank at some point like oh, going dear. through all the kevin smith movies yeah but yeah don't go into this one thinking it's going to be good but i think if you're familiar with the kevin smith universe how he writes movies how he puts them together the whole universe outside of the movies just like his friends and all that stuff if you're into that you're gonna get a lot of laughs yeah there'll be some giggles but it does suck absolutely absolutely so what was better yoga hosers or the mousetrap <laughs> yoga hosers
losers. But again, if we weren't into the Kevin Smith universe, that it wouldn't be as easy of an answer. We'll say that. Yeah. So I think that's all we watched. I think so. Yeah. So outside of that, um, we had a couple adventures over the past week. Well, let me go into the uh one that just happened a couple days ago. I, yeah. I was thinking about not bringing this up, but I'm gonna bring it up anyways. Yeah. Right before you left, mm-hmm. I got a message from a fake profile, mm-hmm. which happened to be a singer in a former band of mine, yeah. and said some absolutely horrendous stuff to me that's yeah. actually been weighing on me this whole time. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how much you follow me on social media, but occasionally I'll make a point on Blabbermouth or Metal Injection or Metal Sucks or something like that. And whenever someone disagrees with me, their common response is looking at my profile picture and accusing me of being a kid diddler. Which is disgusting. Like, that's one of the most horrible things you can say about somebody. And to say something like that based off somebody's looks, like, what is wrong with you? Well, it's the stereotype. Yeah. Like, when you look at them, like, well, it's even in the first Bob's Burgers episode. Like, there's there's a guy, and it's like, oh, yeah, he looks like a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yes, and it, but it shouldn't be. Like, that's just so disgusting. Yeah. Um. So, he called me that, and other things as well, too. Yeah. And it's just been weighing on, my, weighing on me so, so much. I, I guess I'm just gonna ask you on air. Yeah. Should I keep my hair, or should I shave it? 100% you should keep it. I love Why? it. Why? I love it, first of all, and I, I like looking at you within it. Um, but let me go into this guy again for a second here, like, because I, I was around you when you were in this band, and this is a piece of doo-doo like this is somebody who was always rude and mean not only to you but to me who was just innocent bystander he treated me terribly um he was abusive to people in his life he um has a gigantic german pride tattoo on his leg i trying to think of how to put that but there's a lot of really terrible world views that he seems to have um just a lot of bad stuff uh with this guy and luckily we we you know cut him out of our lives over nine years ago now. Now, I don't know if he's been like sitting around like thinking about you know, all the bands that he's been a part of and like how he can, you know, how, you know, his feelings from back in the day or if like maybe something new happened. He's in trouble again for the billionth time and I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised at all. And he's just like, you know, searching down everybody from his past trying to find somebody to try to make feel bad because he feels terrible about himself as he should. Um, I don't know what his motivation is but clearly he's still a piece of doo-doo and he doesn't deserve the air he breathes with all the crap that he has done he doesn't deserve to have words being able to put out there towards anybody to try to tear them down when he is the terrible person i mean i i kind of feel like doing the the foot whoops i just bumped my microphone i hope that people can't hear that um oh they will yeah probably but i i feel like doing the foot slide from the craft and be like you're the whore because <laughs> he's he is the terrible person like with you, with anybody else that he might have reached out to, you don't deserve this. You don't freaking deserve this. You are not what he is claiming. It's disgusting that he's putting that out there in the energy of the world. And you should not change yourself as a result of this because you are a good, amazing person. You do amazing things. You're a sweet person who would never hurt a fly. And I love your freaking long hair. I think it's beautiful and I don't think you should change it. I like it the way it is. And I, I think you should just stay true to who you are because who you are is freaking amazing but it's not staying long is it what do you mean yes there there is parts in the middle that are uh, uh, no don't don't sugarcoat it i'm going bald i'm getting a skull it that's that's how i look right now in case you were not familiar you've never seen a picture or a video of me if you've never checked out my interviews anything like that last year i started going bald and it's getting bigger in the middle i'm i'm getting a skull it and i imagine by the time i'm 40 it's just going to be a blank cam- canvas up there and i've always loved skullets i think Devin is the Skull. I mean, there's been other gold skulls too, but I feel like oh he's yeah, like... there's uh, Terrence from Suffocation. There's yeah. the singer of Blood Incantation, who's like uh, really repping the skullet nowadays. Yeah, but I I like skullets. I think they're cool, and I think you should stick with it. Do it in the name of 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 um strapping young lad. Well, you'll also never have to worry about another girl ever hitting on me again if I keep the skullet. Well, good because bees need to stay away. Isn't it just nice to know that I still got it? <laughs> I mean, <sighs> like I don't have to partake in it but just you know just to get the compliment once in a while you know i can straighten up my tie you know still got it (laughs) 
I can't do that right now. <laughs> well, I mean, I I haven't got gotten any compliments in a long time either, so I feel that. But like, well, you're not around people either, well, and when you are around people, it's your other job, and yeah. you know that's what we call sexual harassment <laughs> in the workplace. So, <laughs> fair point, fair point. It's not just a Frank Zappa instrumental; it's also <laughs> something that happens when you work with more than yourself. Fair point. But still, I love the solid. I support the solid. I would love you to go with it. All right. Well, the reason I brought all of that up is because, you know, I am still questioning what I should do with that because I'm mm-hmm. I'm not sold on keeping it. I'm not sold on shaving it. I'm just really, really lost. Yeah. But I wasn't lost. In fact, I had a real epiphany before that. Yeah. I went through a very poignant moment in my life um, the day after recording last week's episode. Yes. I went back to my hometown mm-hmm. and I went to my family's graveyard. In my town, there's the big graveyard. The big cemetery. They have a war memorial. Apparently, it was the first one in Wisconsin, which still does not sound right to me, but uh, it's regarded as the first war memorial of its kind in Wisconsin. Yeah. Then on the outskirts of town, almost abandoned, even though it's on the highway, and trust me, it feels like it's abandoned when you look at it, is where my family is buried. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of war heroes there. There's other people that have been a part of my life as well and I went there because I felt like I needed some closure after back in the beginning of August I think it was August 1st I found out my grandma died the week before I found out two days after they had the funeral yeah. no one told me I had no way to know I just randomly came across it because occasionally I look at my hometown uh, funeral parlor to see if anyone I knew died yeah. and lo and behold my grandma was one of them 91 years old uh, especially with her being a chain smoker part of her life, uh, having multiple strokes, and potentially having dementia and going into Alzheimer's, I think she lived a very long life. Yeah. Especially with all the things that she could have died from earlier. Um, there's some other stuff about my grandma that I'm not going to go into detail because it's not my story to tell, but I did just want to pay my respects to her. And we've been talking about it all through August, mm-hmm. all through September, part of October, but we finally did it in October yeah. last week, back on Saturday. We took the nearly two hour drive now yeah from, <laughs> i know to make it back there um and that was the very first thing when we got in no 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 we went to the gas station first yes and um got some of my local pizza that they have there and it tasted just as amazing as when i was living there mm-hmm. the box has changed the whole town has changed but that pizza still tasted as amazing as it did when i was growing up it was good it is good <laughs> i'm not saying it's my favorite pizza around here because i think there's better pizza closer to us yeah but, but- it does taste good for that area it's outstanding it's super cheesy super yeah cheesy. it should win an award for a small town <laughs> exactly for a small town pizza although apparently they have two brick oven pizza restaurants in i town. know what is that they're like almost <laughs> perpendicular to each other too like if you use the alley <laughs> they're right next to each other yeah that blows my mind but after that we went to my family cemetery and before we get into the rest of that like what did you think of the cemetery after not being there for like 10 years yeah it's been quite a while i mean it's pretty much what i remember except for like it seemed like maybe some of the roads around it had been built up since we were there last um it's a little bit of a challenging one to maneuver because it's on like a very lumpy hill which, oh yes which is a lot of i things, almost fell over i know it, one is raining on and off that day too which doesn't help um which i mean I, i've definitely seen cemeteries on hills before but never this lumpy yeah <laughs> so that was a little bit of a challenge but um yeah i mean it's, it's, it was a very small town cemetery you know yeah, yeah. well mm-hmm. it's the uh what else well i was gonna say it's for like all the outcasts in the world yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh yeah you can either go to this really nice cemetery in town that's uh kept up mowed every week uh not lumpy yeah. or you can go to this one on a gravel road mm-hmm. um where uh it feels like uh, any step could lead to your demise like if you trip and fall and land on a gravestone you're dead oh <laughs> uh, yeah you know that kind of stuff yeah. but um um i saw my grandma's uh head stone right next uh, the same headstone as my grandpa's which i'm actually amazed that they share a headstone they must have replaced that because that was not the case before uh i saw my uh, great grandma's grave and my great grandpa's grave my great uncle's grave um a lot of war heroes that happened in there too uh, world mm. war one world war two the korean war then everything took a turn um back almost three years ago now coming up
coming up December 6th, so it'll be three years. My dad died. Yeah. Uh, one of the three biggest reasons why I have all the mental problems that I have. My mom, my dad, my brother. Everyone else can try, and they've failed to hit me as hard as what they've done. Yeah. Even the singer situation, like, it hit hard, but it was also hitting on stuff that's already on my mind. Yeah. About how I look, who I am, all that kind of stuff. Insecurities. Uh, all my insecurities. Yeah. But just like my grandma, my dad died and no one told me mm -hmm. uh, when the funeral was going to happen. I had to find that out on my own. I actually missed out on a Rammstein concert because it happened on the same day. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to go to the funeral because, um, well, from what I understand, if I would have showed up, um, my dad's former bike club would have made sure I left. To put, to put it that way. Yeah. Um, I, I think you can get the hint from there. But I had no idea where my dad was going to be buried because he moved away from my hometown. He wasn't there anymore. He got remarried. Um, moved 70 miles away from the hometown. So I figured like, okay, he lives up there now. So he's probably up there or knowing what my mother-in-law is like, um, <laughs> I'm sure she would have buried him right next to where my Boston Terriers are buried as well. In the backyard. Yeah, right in the backyard. Like, I wouldn't have been surprised if oh. that's what she would have done. No. That's not what happened. I saw my dad buried in the cemetery mm -hmm. and anger just started to rile up inside me in a way that I didn't think was really possible. You didn't really see that anger because I was doing everything I could to stand up without falling. Yeah. And I was just so filled with emotions of sadness and anger and everything else that was going on. Of then I also saw that he has a shared headstone and his wife is going to be buried right next to him mm -hmm. when she goes. Which doesn't make sense as she's never lived in my hometown. She's only ever been there when my dad was coming through town. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, I get it from the fact like a husband and wife being buried together. That's what my grandma and grandpa did despite the fact that they were divorced and then they got remarried again right before my grandpa died. Um... I, I get it from that aspect, but I also just figured my dad would have been buried up, up where he lived when he died, not the uh, hometown. Yeah. So seeing that just filled me with such a sense of anger. I did something that um, I got some crap for, but I still think I'm 100% justified in what I did. Yeah. Uh, what's one of your favorite horror exploitation movies? <laughs> I spit on your grave. Also one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Well, it's also a Bloody Hammer song as well, too. Yeah, that's true. From the last album. Yeah, I did exactly that twice. And if it wasn't a rainy, windy day, I would have peed on it. Yeah. Had my brother's uh, headstone would have been there, I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. He no could idea. be cremated, he could be in an urn, he could have a headstone somewhere, I he could be buried in the next town over, I have no idea. But had I seen his, I probably would have squatted. <laughs> And just did what I had to do. All right. I, I know it's like emotion filled, but just the idea is pretty funny. Oh, I know. <laughs> and just in case I didn't have my balance, I would have put my butt on the headstone to make sure I'm balanced. <laughs> and then just did what I had to do. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah, but um, yeah, I spat on my dad's grave twice. Uh, one where my dad was, and the other I was aiming for where my mother-in-law would be. Um, uh, but it hit my dad's one again, so you know, double sh double shot. Um, yeah, I know that one doesn't mean as much as she's still alive, but um, and there might be some things like, well, she's not one of the three people that caused your trauma. Why would you try to do that? Oh, did she did some stuff? Yeah. Oh, I'll just say it. The last words I ever heard from her spoken was I should have died instead of my brother. Which is disgusting. Number one to ever say something like that. And number two, like, like your brother was an innocent thing. Like, all the crap that he did, not only to you, but to your dad and mother-in-law as well. Okay, picture the situation I just talked about with my ex-singer. Yeah. Picture that on a daily basis, yep. plus physical violence, uh -huh. plus, tra plus psychological trauma, plus all of this every single day, Yeah. plus relentlessly trying to get me to off myself. Yeah. Yep. Mm. That's what I dealt with for 30 years of my life. Yep, from your brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyone who thinks that um, I should have taken the high road and not done such a thing, I want to see you be in that situation and see what you would have done. Well, and the thing is, like, you know, people can say that all the time. And I, I understand they're not necessarily coming from a bad place when they're saying this. Sometimes they are, but some of them are, are not coming from a bad place. They're just trying to motivate to, like, you know, to be able to move on. But, like, everybody goes through different things. 
everybody deals with things differently. Everybody's bar is different. Everybody's processing of trauma and anything that goes on in their life is different. So whether people who are saying stuff like that have gone through trauma or not themselves, they're not in your shoes. They don't know what you're dealing with. They don't know what it takes to process the things you're dealing with in your shoes. And I mean, it's not like you took a sledgehammer to the gravestone, like sledgehammer. <laughs> you literally spit on the ground. Like yeah. it, it could be a lot worse. We could have lit a match. And I wanted to do worse. <laughs> right? Trust me. Right. I really wanted to. It could have been so much worse. Like it was literally spit in the wind. Like, which I, I, I get some people who are religious might have other connotations around that and stuff. But again, different strokes, different folks. Um, Look, if I'm going to hell for that reason, I think you're <laughs> overlooking a lot of other stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I also took some pictures. Uh, they're up on my Instagram and stuff like that of the, the graveyards and stuff like that. I, mm -hmm. I did post the individual headstones as well. I took pictures of the individual headstones, but they didn't turn out the way that I wanted them to. Yeah. Because I was still shaky on the ground, so I didn't post those. But Understand. I did take like one overarching picture of uh, the family gravestones and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, that's not all we did in my hometown. I also looked around and wanted to see what the town has become. Yeah. It's a poop hole. Yeah. It really went to hell. Yeah. Well, and it's weird because like so much of it has like deteriorated, but then they'll randomly be these new houses. Yeah. By, like by my old high school, there's like these brand new properties. And it's like, who's affording that? Who's living in this town? I, I would love to know the answer to that. I know. And of course, with it being so dilapidated, what's on the ground this time of year in 2024? Why so many Trump signs Yo, as well, bro. which I think is just a perfect description of what the Trump community looks like. <laughs> it really is. A poop hole, dilapidated town. You could say they're trying to get by. You could say they're trying to get to a better America. But what's stopping you from fixing up these places? You could say it's money. but And I say this. With all sincerity, because the last stop that we made in my hometown was at the grocery store. We parked at the end of the parking lot, mm -hmm. and once you know it, on the other end of the parking lot, uh, there is a little ditch. Uh, there's uh, the main road of the town, and across the street from that is my childhood home. Yeah. How would you describe what my childhood home looks like now? It's very 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 rough like and i i've been there with you in the past years ago and i mean even, even then it wasn't looking right but like everything about it is falling apart aside from the roof it looks like they may have redone their roof recently yes fix your hair but not your body <laughs> <laughs> well i mean some, sometimes they you know checking one thing off at a time so and it, no the, of, the roof was fixed years ago was it okay yeah okay then never mind but it, what basically what i was gonna say if, if if you're a struggling family if that's where you gotta start that's where you gotta start but yeah i mean everything about it is falling apart there's holes like you can see through the house like there's everything coming apart the porch is coming apart the siding's coming apart the i mean the garage has always been a mess um the yard is not a yard like yeah it's just, it's bad yeah i grew up in a two-story white house and when i got a little bit older started adding some blue sky blue trim around the windows did you see any sky blue <laughs> not sky blue anymore no yeah. it's dead gray yeah, every, everything is very faded and not whatever it was originally. Yeah, there used to be trees in the yard. They're all gone. Uh, there's big patches of gr what used to be grass, which is now just dead dirt. The garage doors have no doors. Uh, um, it just looks like a broken home. Yeah. It looks like a broken family lived in that home. I've set, had some people say it looks like the Amityville Horror House, which, <laughs> yeah, I totally understand. I mean, it, it does look like some, some stuff probably went down there. Yeah, it looks like a murder house. And if you do look up that picture on Instagram, that's the easiest place to find it. Um, You can see what I grew up in. It uh, obviously didn't go onto the property. A new family lives there. I don't know their stories. I don't know who's there. N not my monkey, not my circus. Yeah. But spending 23 years of my life in that house and just seeing what it turned into, the house that was supposed to be mine, mm -hmm. the one I was, I thought I was paying for when I was making money uh, enough to afford the house payments living there which i didn't think was ever going to happen but you know i was playing cover bands and i was able to cover that mm -hmm. the money wasn't going towards house payments my dad was buying my brother stuff with it he was buying them hotel rooms to take his girlfriend of the night with mm -hmm. uh his gambling problems his weed and drinking and all that stuff uh, everything i was told that i was making house payments and then after three months i i saw a foreclosure sign yeah and it was like hey what's this all about right and my dad had to come clean about it. <sighs> 
And this was in the end of January, and I had two weeks to find somewhere to live, yeah. or else I was going to sleep in my car. Thankfully, things worked out the way that didn't involve that. Mm -hmm. But that was supposed to be my home. And now when I look at it, I could not be more thankful I got away. And that was the epiphany that I had, was I there was nothing more that I wanted in my life to be able to have my own home like that, mm -hmm. to be able to be able to have enough money to be able to afford everything here. I mean, it was a two-story house, acre and a half of land, a separate garage, all of this different stuff. It was supposed to be mine until it wasn't. Yeah. But just seeing what it turned into made me realize that I grew past all of it. Yeah. I grew past the town, which is a complete poop hole. I grew past the house that just... There's part of me that makes me wonder if it just looked that bad to begin with and just everything around the house is just looking like crap now. Right. But also, I feel like, at least for a little bit of time, I got past all the trauma that happened in this house because I was able to look back and realize that I'm not there anymore. You escaped. I escaped. Yeah. I was kicked out by the law, but I escaped. That's not like you ended up living in your car in the yard there or anything like that. And I very well could have if I did not find a place within two weeks. And yeah. I'm so thankful I was able to. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, I'll be honest. That day I found the foreclosure sign, that was one of my suicide attempts. Yeah. And not saying you have to agree with me doing that, but you might understand why. Yeah. Um, yeah, the last one in Clear Lake. But, uh, yeah, I felt better once I realized I wasn't there anymore. That I don't need to hang on to those feelings anymore. Yeah. That I'm past it. It's over. Half of the people that lived in that house when I was there are dead. I don't need to hang on to this anymore. Okay. And at least for a little bit of time, I was able to. Did you notice that at all? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, number one, I think yeah. just sitting there and kind of being able to reminisce and like I talk about all that stuff was very cathartic because like it was your way of kind of getting it out of your mind and into the air instead of the universe. And then being able to be like, okay, I'm ready to go. That's kind of closing that door on it, you know? Then, of course... We thought about eating in around my hometown. Yes. And we went to the next town over and wow, did we see a lot of Trump signs oh, yeah. when we left. My favorite one in particular, someone painted their silo. Trump 2024, take America back. Wait, girl, what do you think he's going to do for you? He is not doing anything for you. He doesn't know you. He doesn't, he doesn't know care you. about you. He doesn't care for you. Oh. And that was the other thing, like when I was going through my hometown, when I was going through all the other towns in Wisconsin. Because, uh, but not to say it's not around here too, because we occasionally see a Trump sign. Oh, absolutely. That's going to be everywhere. Yeah. I'm aware of this. Yeah. But just like seeing how many of them <laughs> there no. were. And how many of like, like when we're on some of the main roads, the like massive Trump signs. Mm -hmm. And I just think about, because I knew, at least at one point in time, I knew families that lived in these houses mm -hmm. and seeing them with these Trump signs in front of them, it, it made me even happier to escape. Yeah. Yeah. It, don't get me wrong there was the occasional harris walt sign yeah but it was overshadowed by all the trump signs definitely definitely although the next town over had more harris walt signs yeah i would say the closer we got back to our hood <laughs> yeah the more there was the more there was <laughs> But, um, yeah, we went through my old, uh, working grounds when I was teaching drums and, uh, had my first original band Shattered. Yes. Uh, looked at the old, uh, music store I worked at, which is no longer a music store. It kind of looked like a bait shop or something like that. I'm not yeah. entirely sure what it was. I couldn't tell, sure. But it just looked awful. And, um, we were going to stop at this restaurant that had these absolutely amazing honey-dipped chicken tenders or chicken mm -hmm. fingers, whatever you call them. Yes. Chicken strips, whatever. But then... Well, I'll be honest, I got scared off by some um, people who really, really look like Trump supporters who would not like my kind. So <laughs> I didn't want to stop in there. Yeah, we kept driving. Then we went to the other side of town, which I was so excited. And I made a joke, but um, there was a quick trip which there. We, we are a quick family. Yes. Um, I never thought there would be a quick trip in the <laughs> town over from my hometown. Yes. Um, it, it is in the same lot that used to be these uh, discount stores that weren't really discount stores. It only discounted discounts from the MSRP price of something. <laughs> Um, uh, you you know the types yeah. where, uh, you know, back like in the 90s, a CD would cost $30 because the MSRP was like 40 yes. or 50 or something, even though you could go to Walmart and get it for 10 Yeah, but like now <laughs> you go in there, you can find a bottle of white rain for 10 bucks, and it's like, you can buy a Walmart for 99 cents. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 Walmart's in the city. No, that's more going to be more expensive. I have to drive 25 miles to, <laughs> to Walmart <laughs> to get that. You know how much I would waste on gas? My coconut-scented white rain. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> but no, um, for anyone not in the area, Wisconsin, Minnesota, I think there's some in Illinois and Iowa as well too. Quick Trip is just like this giant convenience gas station that's like part supermarket, part gas station, part food, part everything. Yeah, they have a lot of like ready to go food. Yeah, H O T T O G O. You can get yeah, the food hot to go. go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they should do something. They should. Although Target's using that now, so yeah. that might be a little hard. Sure. But um, we um took some ones and twos there, and then we went back. <laughs> Got some beverages. Yeah, got some beverages and then uh, made our way back uh, over closer to Minnesota again. But uh, before we got there, we had to stop at the uh, local truck stop when I was living in my yes. previous uh, town. Yes. Uh, the Flying J truck stop. Which we do have one not too far from us here, but far enough that it's a little bit of a pain. Well, but... it's a national chain. Yeah. Mm. But um, we were going to get some food there because despite how it sounds... I know Futurama's made this joke before, too, that you should never eat gas station food. I know. But Flying J has amazing food. And Quick Trip. Yeah, yeah. and Quick Trip mm -hmm. as well. Well, I already mentioned that. Yes, but, uh, but yeah, with Flying J, they have like chicken wings, macaroni and cheese. They have egg rolls. Egg rolls are good. Uh -huh. They have pizza. They have so much stuff there. Yeah. But this particular one didn't have the food we were looking for. They but usually didn't. do, but it was out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they did have some dessert on stock. Yes. We got some Cinnabon. Yes, they have a Cinnabon station and they were fresh putting them out that we had them. Which obviously we have Cinnabon around here too, but... Well, okay. yeah, I mean, we just drive five minutes to Mall of America <laughs> yes. and it's right there, but... but uh, we were there. It smelled good, so... Why not? And, and remember that for anyone not in the area, if you live in Minnesota, you are five minutes from Mall of America, no matter where you are in the state. <laughs> yes, even if you're in Duluth, you are five minutes from Mall of America. <laughs> that, that, that was a meme I saw a while back where uh, someone was trying to describe where they live in Minnesota and it just said, uh, Mall of America, we all live in Mall of America. <laughs> It's true. But, but no, seriously, I think we are like five, seven minutes away from Yeah, Walmart. depending on traffic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we don't normally go in there because uh, people, but uh, I mean, there is a Cinnabon right there too, but it was right there. We were driving right by it, so we just picked up some and it was excellent. It was. Got really filling towards the end, but uh, it, was, yeah. it was really good. It was. And then we made our way back into our neck of the woods, and I was feeling pretty decent yeah. about stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, well, the day of recording last week's episode, we got a note on our door saying that the electricity was going to be out all day. Yes, on Tuesday. On Tuesday. So we had two work days and the weekend to try to figure out what we were going to be doing. You took the day off of work because you weren't going to be able to work. Yeah, well, I worked part of the day, but yeah. Well, before it got shut off. Mm -hmm. And w wouldn't you know, it was two minutes after they said it was going to shut off. So, I know. you know, they were, <laughs> they were pretty much right on the ball there because I'm so used to people being late and stuff. But we had another excursion that we did. We we did we did like we we're just trying to think of things to get us out of the house and take up some time and one thing that's been kind of on our mind and we had a little version with a few weeks back but well let's do this in chronological order okay i wanted new speakers okay, for yes. a long time we'll start with that piece yes. and we stopped at a local electronics realtor some consider it a buy whether it's best or worst your opinion i'm rolling my eyes at you right now <laughs> but the one that we went to isn't the ones that are by us we went closer to the Wisconsin area. Yeah, the border. Yeah, near the border. And it was a much bigger selection of computer speakers. And I was looking at these. They have some Logitech ones. They had some uh, Steel Series ones, which uh, I heard are good, but I just didn't know enough about them. But I almost got suckered in into buying Razer again after trying to avoid <laughs> Razer. Like, you I saw me. Quit you, baby. <laughs> you saw me struggling. I know. You're like, uh, yeah. yeah, I was really trying to figure out what I was going to do. And we were talking about it and it's like, okay, well, if you want this one, we're going to do this one. Yeah. Then it came into my mind that, well, across the street from this Best Buy is a guitar center and they had, they potentially have these speakers that I've wanted for quite a while. I've always wanted studio monitors, never mm -hmm. had them. Yeah. Why don't we just go sit in the parking lot and figure out what we should do? Yeah. If we should get the Razer, fine, we will. But let me look at these other ones. Exactly. And I'm so glad that we did because I picked up the Personas Air. 3.5 studio monitors mm -hmm. not from guitar center no. but they were shipped to us in two days after being told it was going to take about a week mm -hmm. so that was pretty cool yeah. saved it by four days yes 
Um, what are your thoughts on these speakers? I love them. I mean, number one, visually, I think they're super sleek looking and they're just fancy looking. Um, but sound wise, like with music, they sound so clear and dynamic. And well, like, like we were listening to some comparison videos prior to purchasing them or before they came to it um, as well. And like there's some that had like heavier bass, but then they just sounded muddy. Yeah. Whereas these ones, the bass actually does come through really nice, and especially for us living in an apartment like i think they're perfect for that and then earlier today we were listening to kind of how they sound for recording and stuff like yeah that. we're we try to do some testing before yeah. we start recording and like there's a little bit of like that comes through in some of the words which is gonna happen regardless but and, and well you, unless you get the really really yeah, expensive mics of course um but you did a little fine tuning which i felt like cut that down but through all of that though they sound so crystal clear with our vocals like i just i think they're amazing and how much should we get them for 80 bucks 80 bucks normally 100 we got them 20 bucks cheaper 80 bucks what i was looking at the razor one i was looking at was going to be about 200 yeah so <laughs> i think this is the much better deal yeah and i mean the biggest thing that threw me off from razor was paying the razor tax yeah the name recognition so like so much of it is that yeah the price i know like they could sound great but you're also paying more for it because of the name yeah mm -hmm. which is exactly what sony is doing now for all the playstation stuff now yeah that's why they can charge a thousand bucks uh canadian for the uh, ps5 pro mm -hmm. which is so messed up <laughs> uh, but i really like these things i'm gonna have to dial them in a little bit more yeah um i also use this uh, this is not a plug or sponsorship or anything like this but i use an application called fx sound which is free although you can donate if you choose to and it just takes what sounds very mediocre it makes it sound fantastic as long as you know what you're doing yeah like it goes from making Making anything sound lifeless to sounding jaw-droppingly great. I recommend it to anyone, no matter what you use for computer speakers, these will make them sound better. Even if you have thousands of dollars of speakers for your computer, get this app, FX Sound. It'll make it sound even better. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, once I put all that together, especially the first time without even touching anything on the back, it just sounded so good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when it comes to this, I would really love to know how this is sounding to you, if it's still sounding good or not, if anything got messed with i don't i think it just might be the speakers yeah but um yeah if you've made it this far into our ramblings please let us know how, right. the, how this sounds <laughs> uh wait till you see the time before i cut all the dead spots out it's yeah. just insane but that wasn't the only thing that we did no so we had a little excursion with us the other week as well but um we've had our couch for Oh, what? Well, nine and a half years. Nine and a half years now. And yeah. I mean, once upon a time, it was a lovely creature, but it is wore out. And so eventually, not only do we want to get something new, but we definitely want to downsize with it as well. We, it, it's a, one of those massive L-shaped ones, which number one is very big for our one bedroom apartment, but also it's just the two of us. We don't have people over here. No one wants to come over here. And no one <sighs> wants to. And we don't want them over. Even so. when we had friends, they didn't want to come over here. And so. I didn't want them over. Yeah. So Well, that's the other thing. Is, <laughs> we're thinking about either just doing two recliners or doing like one like the love seats with like the center console area as well um so we uh went over to a furniture store again as we went one a few weeks back as well and just kind of meandered around check out what is out there and uh for future planning we're not buying right now but hopefully sometime earlier next year i would love to think next year it's a possibility yes um yeah, i mean number one they have come so far since we bought this one. oh like <laughs> it's what, crazy what was like five thousand dollars back in 2015 yeah is now almost affordable yes now, which is yeah. mind-boggling to me yeah and the features some of them have i mean some of them have spe uh, speakers in them um you can charge your phone wirelessly, wirelessly on some of them yeah there's so many cool things and and the push buttons and stuff like uh, with a headrest yes. lumbar support oh, the legs yeah N no more do you have to kick uh the cushion underneath you to put uh <laughs> the recliner back it's true, you can it's just true. use a button now oh how fancy is that but yeah we looked around a lot we have kind of our top three right now i mean they're expensive so we're hoping maybe by the time we uh are you know wanting to purchase that maybe they'll have gone down in price or there'll be other similar ones that are of cheaper prices or bite the bullet <laughs> because that's where we pretty much sit all day every day <laughs> i mean that is true we so. probably start sleeping there then too so lots to think about but there are some amazing ones that we found well just think about that in the summer like our top choice imagine being able to lay all the way back 
back yeah. with the lumbar support, uh-huh. air conditioning on uh-huh. in the summer, uh-huh. just putting lights on off. King of the Hill or the Simpsons, lights like off. we always do, mm-hmm. lights off, actually being able to sleep somewhere where it's cool. And ice and, beverage in our cup holder. Yeah. Phones you're, you're charging t- wirelessly. You're, you're telling me that's not worth the price of admission? I mean, you're raising some valid points here. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we're saving up for a trip. We can just get rid of the bed. We'll turn that into our office. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> or we can keep the bed until it goes out and not have to replace the bed after yeah, it goes sure, out fine <laughs> or if we ever do get the opportunity to move into somewhere bigger that is true and just think of how much room we will save once we get rid of this big l-shaped recliner here there will be so much room for activities yeah i could actually put the led lights that i use to record uh interviews and other videos mm-hmm. like one doesn't have to be sitting on the couch anymore i know that'd be crazy it would <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my absolute top choice is uh, our number one. Yeah. Um, other ones are good, too. Yes. Other ones are good, too. Yeah. But can you really put a price on that kind of comfort and Touché. everything that came with it? We'll see what happens when uh, the time comes when we eventually have to get rid of this couch. <laughs> but um, I'm hoping to be a little pops about that. All right. Did I bore all of you with that, with uh, going through my childhood <laughs> trauma dumping? <laughs> well, you're not going to be hearing that for the rest of the show. We're going into the news now. Yeah. So up first, the lineup or Sick New World 2025 was announced. <gasps> you always said we should go to Vegas. That's true. And wouldn't you know it, this happens to land on our anniversary. Oh, hey, it does. That's so, funny. So, you know... <laughs> Maybe. We'll think about it. So well, maybe we should look at the lineup first. Let's, I'm just gonna let, I'm looking at the big like uh, poster that has them all on it, so I'm not going in any kind of order, just kind of top to bottom. Crack so, open a cold one, boys. Crack it open a cold <laughs> one. Um, If you have something to say about it, we'll say something. Okay, here we go. Now, before yeah. we get into this, uh-huh. Sick New World was originally like a new metal emo goth festival. Yes. That is not the case anymore. No. Although they still have emo goth and new metal on here um, but it's uh, got more variety this time yeah well, let's, let's nibble on into it uh up first metallica why why i mean are, are they gonna be playing saint anger in its entirety that seems to be the only way it's appropriate <laughs> maybe maybe lincoln park solely because they they have the new chicken well yeah. i mean they did return i mean yeah. that's that was bound to happen yep. um yeah. i saw lincoln park opening for metallica back in 2003 and um that, that that was enough that was enough <laughs> uh queens of the stone age Never got into them outside Me of the either. first album. Me either. AFI. From December Underground onwards, they suck. Yeah, I never got into them. But... Everything before Miss Murder, which is their biggest song. Hey, Miss Murder again. <laughs> oh, that's them. Okay. Yeah. Everything before that song is incredible punk. Okay. Um, I really might even throw them onto the, the spin the choice wheel. Okay. Just so you can see what AFI used to sound like before they became just whiny. Uh, Evanescence. Well, that's your reason to go okay fallen is a guilty pleasure Outside yeah I, that, have I, we ever I, talked about this on the show i don't think we have she loves fallen okay, no, no 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 loves no she is infatuated I am not. it's baby making music to it her is not. <laughs> he has gotten this idea in his head because he thinks it's funny when really like i never liked them back in the day over the years fallen has become a little bit of a guilty pleasure pleasure just because guilty it's... pleasures is still you enjoying them <sighs> Fine, whatever. The point is, calm your tits. I'm trying to talk here. Oh, look at that for the first swear of the show. That's not a swear word. It's one of the seven dirty words you can't say on TV from George Carlin. Is it? Yeah, it's the last one, actually. Girl, that's not a dirty word. Anyways. It's not anymore. <sighs> the point is- Also, the S word used to be in that seven can words you can't say. Okay, can I talk? No. <laughs> You're going to have to deal with your people. But no. Speak when spoken to. <laughs> woman <laughs> try to crack my knuckles but i can't they're all do it for you thank you um but no fallen is a little bit of a guilty pleasure but i i haven't listened i've never listened to evanescence outside of that maybe a couple singles i've heard outside of that but outside of that, i've never listened to them so I, I, they're not my favorite band they're not this big thing in my life i seem to think they are now if you listen back to the show which uh i highly recommend the metal fairy does after we're done recording i said you love fallen i didn't say you loved evanescence but <laughs> 
But in our personal life, you throw this in my face all the time. That, Every chance I get. That yes. I love Evanescence and Amy Lee is like my my favorite person. There would the be world. no within temptation without Evanescence. Right, right. <laughs> Moving onward, Ministry. They play local shows. Um, I, Pepe from King is now drumming for Ministry. Okay. I've never gotten into them, though. Well, they started off as a new wave band back in the 80s. Okay. Like, pure pop new wave. All right. Then they became an industrial <laughs> metal band. Okay. Then they basically became the left. Like, um, they have three albums about how terrible George W. Bush is. Okay, okay. <laughs> 311, all mixed up. Don't know what do. Can I get my 311 tattoo after this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never listened. Got it. Them. Oh, Ska. Yeah. Uh, Sisters of Mercy. I've heard that name, but I. They are one of the really. quintessential goth bands. Okay. 80s goth. Okay. Like when you think of 80s goth, that is Sisters of Mercy. Okay. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, Gojira. Uh, I've talked about them a lot. Well, I don't remember. Gojira. Well, they're coming to town opening for Corn, so seeing them on Sick New World makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Although I would have thought, considering the Olympics appearance, that they would have been higher up on the bill. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, they're pretty close to the top, but. The top third, but. But still. Yeah, like, they should be the biggest band in the world right now. But I mean, at the same time, think about the crowd going to this show. Do, are they really Olympics watchers? Touche. Um, Acid Bath. This is the only band that gets me a wiggle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Dax Riggs was my third ever interview. Yes. And he straight up told me to my face that Acid Bath would never, ever, ever get back together. Just like Taylor Swift. Never, ever getting back together. <laughs> well, 2024 seems to be different. <laughs> And once you know it, money talks. Of course, the two Acid Bath albums are two of the greatest 90s metal albums ever made. Mm -hmm. They're eventually going to be on the Spin the Choice wheel. I might even add them after this segment. We'll see. But um, we'll also be talking about a new Dax Riggs single later in the show. Yes. Uh, three Days Grace, Two Times. Are they playing plays? I guess I don't know what that means. Oh, two X? sweet baby child. You already forgot. Yeah. They have both singers now. Oh, yeah. They, they think they're the first Halloween. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, that's what they're going by now. Yeah, okay. Interesting. And that's another one where <laughs> there's a few songs, kind of like the Evanescence thing, where uh, she uses this code word called catchy yeah. when she means that she's infatuated with the song. I do not mean I'm infatuated. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it on the radio. It's catchy. I'll, I can sing along probably if I had to because I've heard it so many times, but I'm not seeking it out. I don't have it liked on Spotify. It's not on my favorites playlist. All I Sometimes have to DJX will bring it up because DJX sucks, but I've I'm never had Three Days Grace come up on attention. my DJX. But you do have Sabrina Carpenter come up on it. Yeah, and it also plays some uh, Spanish music I've never listened to before. Exactly. It'll, br it'll bring up German polka. Exactly. Well. It brings up all kinds of craziness. Oh, but Three Days Grace, heaven forbid they come up. Yeah. <sighs> Down. Ah, uh, yes. The uh, sludgy Phil Anselmo and company band. Uh, saw them once. Eh, it was enough. Yeah, no. Um, well, you never heard them. Yeah, but just hearing the description is enough for me. Okay. Um, Darren M Malakian uh, and Scars on Broadway. That is the uh, whiny, sing the whinier singer of System of a Down. Um, the one he does all the high pitch vocals and stuff. I'm going to yeah. be honest. I didn't know there was another singer. I there's two of them. There's no one idea. with a, there's one with a deeper voice and one that uh, sounds like you're stepping on his testicles. <laughs> Right. It's the latter, okay. and it sucks. Okay. The Flaming Lips. One of my most hated bands, even when we did the uh, most hated bands, I forgot to put the Flaming Lips in there. Yeah. It is just that hippie jam band for the 21st century. Okay. They wrote a song that's 24 hours long. Yeah, I, I couldn't name a song of theirs. My life Do that, so. you realize? Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, okay. They also did a collaboration with Miley Cyrus at some point. I don't remember if that was an album or a show or what that was, but... Uh, okay. Okay. G with a dot over it. I have no idea what that is. Not not a single clue. Cannibal Corpse. This is where it started getting weird for me, seeing Cannibal Corpse on here. Yeah. Uh, of course, um, uh, one of the guitarists of Cannibal Corpse, uh, Eric Rutan, uh, lost his home in oh. uh, Hurricane Milton. Oh, lost okay. about 90% of uh, all of his possessions oh, and everything. That's uh, nice. So, uh, amazingly, they have not made a GoFundMe for that. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if some Cannibal Corpse fans put up one in his honor or something like that, but yeah. uh, I just that be a complete travesty. Oh, absolutely. He was touring in Europe when that happened. Then he had to like leave yeah. the tour to go back and take care of stuff. I can imagine. Oh, but um, oh, I love 
Cannibal Corp. Well, the Corpse Grinder era of Cannibal Corpse, I love. Uh, the, the Chris Barnes era, the early stuff, I, I just can't do those vocals. But uh, they play here, so I don't need to go to Vegas to see them. Yeah, yeah I'm not a Cannibal Corp fan. I appreciate some of their like horror imagery and whatever, but... Some of their horror imagery? That's I, all I, they I, are. I mean, I, I appreciate their horror aesthetic, but I, I don't like their music. Okay, okay. all right. Reading into my words. Words matter. Nibble your hands off if you don't stop us. I should just name the show that. This week. Words matter. If you love saying that. He loves saying that. I all said the it time. before. Lums all with hats. the time, <laughs> off stage, if you will, he says that to me all the time. Off mic. Off stage. Off mic. I wish we were on stage. Up next, Mashuka. Saw them twice. The first time I saw them, it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Second time, I was completely and utterly bored. Yeah. Um, I. It made me stop being a Mashuka fan the second time I saw them. <laughs> <laughs> like it. It lost all the appeal. Like see them once. Mm -hmm. Don't see them twice. Yeah, they're not for me. Tom. Tomahawk. Uh, yes, one of Mike Patton's bands. Oh, uh, very okay. uh, Native American spiritual okay. uh, kind of stuff. Okay. Like, it gets a little bit heavier it's, at times too, but like, uh, they're reuniting for this show, just okay. like Acid Bath. Okay. Um, I really like, it's kind of messed up, but I really do enjoy them. I don't know that I've ever heard them, though. You're very picky on your Mike Patton yeah. stuff. Oh, um, yeah. You, um, you like Peeping Tom and you like Faith No More. <laughs> and I don't even remember Peeping Tom now. <laughs> Got to get my mojo running. Um, okay, okay, okay. Melvins. Always wanted to see them, never had the opportunity. They're also the reason Nirvana got big. Had uh, Which song do they do? Well, I, I wouldn't would know. know what you would know from the Melvins. Oh, so. okay. I, then I well, don't. the I story I bring up is uh, uh, Kurt Cobain tried out for the Melvins. Yeah. He did not get the audition, uh -huh. and they told him he sucked. <laughs> so he <laughs> went on to good. form Nirvana. <laughs> so you kind of have to blame the Melvins for Nirvana existing. Well, good or bad, yeah. it's because of the Melvins. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's grungy, it's sludgy. I don't know Did if you have any hit or... Well, again, what's a hit? Okay, fair So, I, I wouldn't know what you would know, I so I can't answer that. I probably heard them then. Um, Cradle Again, I'm really surprised to see them on there, but they're yeah. incorporating more metal into this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, that last Cradle of Fell single is absolute straight fire, son! It is. So, I'm very excited to see what the new <laughs> album's gonna sound like. Me? Do any updates on when that's coming out? Next year. Anything? Next year, okay. Yeah, I love Cradle of Filth. We've seen them. I, I don't see the need to travel to Vegas to see them, but I would totally see them again. Well, it's a destination festival, so... So it's yeah. like, if well, you're there, why not check oh, out Cradle sure, Filth? Sure, yeah. Hey, we're already here. Uh, filter. <laughs> and their two songs. <laughs> their two songs. Um, why? Well, well, I mean, they fit more on the original idea of what Sick New World was about than what it is now. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. You? I know the two songs and I'm not exactly I am. The so, world yeah. only knows the two songs. Uh, yeah. You ask anyone to name three Filter songs, they won't be able to do it. No, no. They would have to look it up. <laughs> up next or refuse? Uh, yeah, one of the last shows they're going to be doing. Um, Scandinavian punk rock. Uh, okay. Very aggressive. Um, known for, one of the bands known for uh, starting the D beat in drumming, which is hard to explain if you're not a drummer. Okay. But if you hear it, you know it. Um, yeah, this is one of the last shows they're doing. I don't know that I've heard them before. I think you might dig them. Okay. You might. Okay. Mastodon. Very surprised to see them on there, but they also have a new album coming out next year, so I guess it makes sense. Yeah. And, um, you like some of it. I was just about to say, if you've listened to previous episodes i do like some of their songs so. yeah. <laughs> uh testament this one also just puzzles me as well but <laughs> no. i can say that about all the metal bands that are on here it's an odd mix it is an odd mix it's just like testament like you can see filter and testament on the same day <laughs> And Evanescence? Oh, and Lincoln Park? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like Testament, but again, odd, odd pairings of everything. Terror. Yes, uh, straight up hardcore, uh, st straight edge hardcore. Mm, okay. So, um, no, when you, you. yeah. Mayhem. Why is Mayhem this? <laughs> I just checked out AFI. I'm going to go see Mayhem now. <laughs> Well, no, Mayhem looks like they're going to be playing before AFI. <laughs> and yeah, I should point this out. This is like across like several different venues in Vegas. It's not all just on one stage. Yeah. Like, is it, is it I think it's throughout the entire town. Is it outdoors still? Or? Some of the stages are outdoors. Okay. Some of them are indoors. That's okay. the different venues. Okay. Yeah, I think there's like two big main stages. And then there's like three to five other smaller stages around town. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Exian John Billy DJ? No idea. I'm assuming he's a DJ. 
Okay, I don't care. What? Where, where do you get that idea? Was DJ at the end of it? Oh, maybe. Well, that could just be his initials. That could just be his initials. Under oath. Have you ever checked out Under Oath? I don't think so. I think you would like them because uh, you started getting into metalcore this year. Yeah. They're of the uh, post-hardcore metalcore stuff. Like, okay. um, you know, they it's really like uh, teenage emotional metalcore, which I know you have a soft side for. It's a little bit more emo. Pill yeah. Switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe. they also had a, used to have a lot of Christian imagery to them, but the apparently within the last few years they abandoned Christianity. I'm not sure what caused that, but uh, okay. they got a little bit darker from there. But um, yeah, um, uh, they were popular with everyone as soon as I started getting out of metalcore in 2008. Okay. Right about, but yeah. Um, I think this is Poison the Well. Yeah, Poison the Well. Okay. Uh, another metalcore band. Okay. I, I I know I've heard the name many a time, yeah. but I've well, never listened especially to back in the early to mid 2000s. Yeah. The Hives. I wanna get free. I wanna get free. Oh, uh, that band. Okay. Yeah. Um. No, thank you. Hate them. <laughs> I only know the one song, but I hate them. Yeah. Yeah. Mudvayne. Burr, burr, ding, burr, burr, ding. Moo moo dang. Moo moo dang. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Um. I've never been a Mudvayne fan. No. My brother loved them. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I never got into them. Carcass. Again, carcass. <laughs> like. <laughs> what <laughs> i remember like several years ago they played um not fest and a lot of the slipknot kids weren't getting into them yeah and the singer of kirkus uh, made this line um well slipknot likes to call their fan base maggots okay I mean, um, they have a song called Pulse of the Maggots, which is talking about like the fan base and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, he made a riff. Are you guys maggots or... Oh, <laughs> he is. Oh, Marcus. I'll always remember that. <laughs> Exodus. Yeah, um, seen Exodus multiple times. Uh, yeah. but again, with all the metal bands that are showing up on there, I mean, if Testament's going to be on there, Exodus is going to be on there because yeah. Chuck Billy is the manager of Exodus, so oh. that makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Kitty, yeah, Kitty is back. Um, for anyone who ever wrote them off, like uh, someone to the extreme left of me, also yeah. known as the right, <laughs> only their first album is new metal. Okay, okay. And I don't forget, M Morgan was the last partner of David Gold of yeah. Woods of Ypres. And wasn't she one of your early on interviews too? She was my first in-person interview. First in-person interview. Okay. Like everything past that first album is more like gothic okay. metal. Okay. Only okay. the first one has those new metal vibes. Something to keep in mind. And of course, when you're around David Gold as much, your music's going to get mean, much it's... more depressing, much darker. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what oh. happened. I mean, I haven't heard the new Kitty. I know they had an album come out last year, completely disregarded it for whatever reason. Yeah. But um, when I saw them, their music was quite heavy okay. and they only did a couple songs from the new metal stuff which i appreciated but and i've we've made fun of this in recent weeks as well there was this one chick at the show who had these glow sticks and was <laughs> rave dancing to their entire <laughs> set in the back of the venue and now anytime we listen to anything that could be kind of techno you do that move <laughs> yeah anything dancey ravey techno any of that mm -hmm. just like i don't know how she did that for like an hour straight without getting tired yeah but she did. Drugs. Um, and Machine Head. Machine Head, uh, it depends on what they, well, I mean, they make a lot of sense. They have a lot of new metal albums in the middle of their career. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not really a Machine Head girl. Um, Era? E-R-R-A? Um, kind of that third wave metal core, never really given them the time of day. Mm -hmm. They came out around the same time as After the Burial. So I never really tried. Yeah. They could be good. Yeah. They could suck. I have no idea. Static X. <laughs> Planet Smasher broke up because of Static X. <laughs> When Wayne Static died, I mentioned on Facebook about how, of course, he died of an overdose. Right. That's what happened. Yeah. My singer in Planet Smasher took such offense to that. <laughs> And we basically broke up within a couple weeks of that happening. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? The autopsy came back and he died of an overdose. Wouldn't you know you're better off without that guy? Yeah. <laughs> and the band in total. Oh, God. If I <laughs> if I never hear from Dan again, he'll be too soon. Oh, is that his name? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was... No, it was Dan. Oh, never mind. Um, Deer and Gray. I love Deer and Gray, a Japanese band that mm -hmm. does everything from goth metal to death metal, black metal, yeah. heavy stuff. Like, you will never get the same song twice from them. It's all in Japanese. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of an acquired taste, but I also think that
that if you find the right song, I think you'll be able to get into them. Yeah, I've listened to some of their stuff and I've enjoyed it. Um, I haven't fully submerged myself like in their dis- discography. <laughs> discography. But yeah, there's some good stuff. Here. Yeah, I'm S- going to have to add them to the wheel then. Yeah, Sponge. Are they just going to play Plowed? They're going to play it many a time. Play the same Oops. song. <laughs> Granted, one of the best songs of that genre. Plowed is so good. It is one I of the best songs song. of the 90s. I love that song. <laughs> I wanted to cover that in my cover band days and no one else wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah, of course not. Why do a good song? Yeah, like, uh, I would love to hear that song live yeah. by the band. Yeah. But straight up, me and everyone else in the world can't name another song. Yeah, yeah. Quicksand. <laughs> not familiar, but they me are either. an Australian band. Um, okay. I-, I think it's more in the alternative rock, grunge kind of thing, but I could be completely off base with that. Okay. Uh, Twin Tribes? Not familiar. If it was Twin Temple, that would I have, know. That would have yeah. perked some more interest. Yeah. Arch Enemy. Ugh. I love that they're on the same line as Sponge. <laughs> Take that, Alyssa. <laughs> Shove that up your, you know what. What the kids call a hot take, or at least used to. I didn't like Arch Enemy when Angela was in the band. I, I just never got into them. I mildly like them with Angela. I like like a few songs, but I hate Alyssa. I hate her. Every time she guesses on something, I, it makes me not want to listen to it. It makes me nauseous. Uh, stabbing Westward. Oh, my boys. Remember when we saw them and it was basically alluded to that was going to be one of the last shows they were ever going to do? I know. That then they decided, decided, hey, we we should actually get back let's together. Let's do an album. Let's keep touring. And good for them. I, oh. Uh, yeah, I'm glad they're stab- not gone. Yeah, Stabbing Westward was like one of my bands when I was a teenager. Like, <sighs> Oh, oh I, I love them. And we saw them close, 12 miles away from my hometown. Yes. We in a very, them. very small venue. They're so short compared we to what towered, I thought. You I towered was like over a them. a monster next to them. I like cut off like our entire bodies in the picture because of the, I look like just Godzilla next to them. That's why we never posted the pictures. I did post like our heads. Yeah. But that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, they put on a great show. Yeah, they're amazing. I don't know what band this is. It's a circle with a person standing in it no words not a clue not a clue. Uh, unless it's like is the person doing like this thing no they have their arms out okay they're like slightly apart I okay know. i was wondering if that was dri for some reason but uh no mm. that's not the case death clock why are they on the bottom row <laughs> no not the bottom there's one <laughs> more row still okay. this one yeah death clock makes all the sense in the world because they appeal to basically anyone who likes heavy music it's true even those who hate death metal love death clock because they were on tv yeah, yeah. um and of course it's always great to see gene hoagland playing mm-hmm. or g basically just known for their cover of Blue Monday. Da, 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 da. Lacuna Coil. I love that Lacuna Coil is on the same line as Orgy, and even though I love Tabbing Westward, Tabbing Westward. <sighs> Yeah, I was saw, a mighty have we, fallen. We saw Lacuna Coil, and that was enough. That was it was enough. Yeah. Uh, the birthday massacre. Heard the name, no idea what they sound like. Yeah, me either. Uh, Nuovo Testamento. Test- okay. Yeah, Testamento. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Vision video. Nope, no idea. Seven hours after Violet. Um, that's the basis of System of a Down. So uh, okay. uh, mm-hmm. it seems like all the members of System of a Down are playing this, yes. but System of a Down is not playing this. Exactly. Uh, have no idea what they sound like. So. Uh, uh, I can't say good or bad. Napalm Death on that bottom row. <laughs> well, they're a grind band. Like, they could do like a full 15 minute set and you've heard like three albums. So I know. <laughs> It's just funny though. It's just funny. And I'm wearing a Napalm Death shirt right now. So <laughs> that's very appropriate. Fitting. Uh, Lebanon Hanover. I know Lebanon Park, which is like 10 minutes from here. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Amira Alpha Key. Nope. Not a clue. Show me the body. No, I'm not going to show you the body. Dope. Oh, dope. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, the other band outside of orgy known for doing the dead or alive cover mm. you spin me right round Ooh. baby right round. Oh, God. and then finally- we had to cover that god forbid we cover sponge but we had to do the dope <laughs> version of you spin me right round exactly and then finally scowl um they were in a taco bell commercial last year <laughs> that's about all i know okay okay all right so what do you think of the bill overall i mean i think it's a hot mess if you will there's a handful of bands I enjoy, but not that I would ever travel to see. Unless we were already there. And even there, I wouldn't pay that kind of money to see them. Like, well, we don't know how much it goes for yet. Well, using my Steiner math, I'm sure it's more than <laughs> I'd want to spend. Yeah, I mean, again, if we lived by Vegas, sure. Yeah. But we don't. No. Um, You could also make that same argument for Milwaukee Metal Fest, which we're only about like four hours away from. Something like that, yeah. So but um, it, it depends on where yeah. how you go. But uh, mm-hmm. when that gets announced, um, we'll probably do the same thing that we just did for Sick New World oh, and see how, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> but um, I like that it's more diverse. I like that they're adding metal bands. But that is true. Yeah. I also just don't want to be around that. Uh, oh, I also appreciate the fact that Acid Bath and Tomahawk are back together. Yeah. But that's also not an audience I want to be around. Mm -hmm. it, it is <laughs> nice that it's in April, though, before it gets too hot. Yeah. So that's one good but thing. What are we going to do for our anniversary now? I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right. Yeah. Moving into some other music news. Jake E. Lee. So you might know oh. him as a former guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne, Badlands, lots of other things. He was shot and wounded multiple times in Vegas uh, early this last Tuesday morning. I like how morning. you put the Vegas stories together. I know, right? Uh, early this last Tuesday morning, um, about, apparently around 2.40 a.m., um, he was out uh, walking his dog and he was shot at, which is pretty disturbing. Well, not shot at. He was shot. Was shot. But, I mean, there were multiple bullets um, outside as well. Um, so uh, he had posted... Uh, a couple days after he he was slated for recovery he is recovering um he posted on facebook a couple days after the incident checking is this on been a while since i posted here let's see i deeply appreciate all the concern and well wishes makes everything going on a little better to clarify i was shot three times i was on my way back home from walking my dog coco i didn't name him so don't <laughs> <laughs> don't want to go into details now i'm tired but i feel relatively very lucky the police found 15 shell casings at the scene which means he emptied his clip on me. I could only dodge so many so one bullet went through my forearm one through my foot and one in the back which broke a rib and damaged a lung. Priority now is to keep draining my lung till it's done crying. Then we can pull that tube out and concentrate on the more minor injuries. And by the way, Coco was fine and I appreciate your inquiry inquiries. So super disturbing like and just heartbreaking too, you know. The more I've heard about this story, the more I think it wasn't um, an accident. Yeah. I feel like someone was targeting him. Well, I mean, knowing that they like leered an entire shell on him and like it wasn't like they shot at anybody else either, you know? It, that adds up to that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just <sighs> ugh. I'm, I'm glad he's gonna recover. Mm, yeah, uh, was there absolutely. any mention on the dog? Yep, yeah, yeah. In, his, in his post he said that Coco was doing fine, okay. so thankfully that is all good. <laughs> Alright, I missed that part. Yep. My apologies. But, no, that's um, okay. Yeah, um, ugh. Yeah. yeah, that's all I got. It's just, uh, ugh. Moving on to some other tragic news. Not in the metal world, but in the music world. Um, Liam Payne, who was a singer uh, who rose to fame as a member of the boy band One Direction uh, passed away after falling from the balcony of his hotel room in Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. Um, unfortunately, with that fall, he suffered multiple traumas and hemorrhages, um, which resulted in him passing away. Um, authorities have said that substances were found in his hotel room, which suggests that there was alcohol and drug consumption before his death. Um, local officials also uh, said, well, so, okay, a local official cited by the Associated Press said that he had jumped from the balcony of his room, uh, with forensic expert later explaining the position of his body suggests that he did not adopt a reflexive posture to protect himself so that he could have possibly fallen. And so, so there's a lot of like, did he, didn't he, who knows what happened. Um, there were police uh, that were um, rushed to the scene just after 5 o'clock after the hotel's manager had placed an emergency call complaining about a guest under the influence of drug and alcohol who had destroyed some things in his room. Um, according to them, to the uh, news source, the manager also had expressed concern about them having a balcony and the concern that they might be do, might do something to risk their own life. So it's nothing is for certain now and I mean it's hard to put pieces together in a situation like this unless you have like camera on there which probably is not the case so but it's just a tragic tragic situation all around. Yeah um, whether he did this willingly or not yeah it's just as sad. Absolutely. Uh, he has a kid. Yeah he has a six or seven year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah um, regardless of what happened the fact that the band broke up mm -hmm. um, you're never going to get that same level of fame and popularity again yeah and whether you're in a glam band whether you're in a boy band whatever the case is like when you're on the top of the world mm -hmm. and you're no longer on the top of the world mm -hmm. when you're not the famous member of one direction Harry Styles. well i could have used any example like yeah. if you're not the famous one from nsync if yeah. you're not the famous mm -hmm. one from casey and jojo right well that was a joke but uh <laughs> come on now um it's gonna hit you yeah and if you it, vices start to take over when that starts to happen mm -hmm. And that's the impression that I'm getting yeah. is that, um, you know, just like not having that level anymore. You got to find a way to be able to get that feeling again. And a lot of people yeah. try to do things like that with drugs and alcohol, gambling, sex, other vices that happen. Yeah. And sometimes it can utterly, utterly destroy you. Yeah. Also, I've seen a lot that in recent months, weeks, that there had been a lot of back talking about him online, a lot of like uh, negative press and stuff like that, and just kind of rumors and stuff circulating. Thing, mm -hmm. which it impacts people yeah. it has an impact and like i just talked about it earlier in the show exactly like 
like to your your joke earlier but it's truth like words matter what words you put out there in the world and to people and about people matter so be good yeah and you know with that i my heart goes out to his kid and 100 anyone attached to him and stuff like that it's yep. just it's horrible to see stuff like this happen yeah mental health matters Absolutely. it's why in the description of every episode that we do i put all the mental health stuff on the bottom 100 i know that's not the cure-all i know that's not gonna fix everybody i think just one good conversation can save someone's life mm -hmm. whether you're talking about your mental ailments or just having a normal conversation feeling like you're wanted in the world that can do so much sometimes it's just getting through the next five minutes yeah um, and you know on a related note to bring it back into metal yeah unto others has a, a single called suicide today yeah from their new album and it's an anti-suicide song yes but also it has that tongue-in-cheek well you don't have to kill yourself today you can do it tomorrow right on one coin that sounds or one side of the coin that sounds very sentenced yeah mm -hmm. to me i've always when i've heard stuff like that like i always just think of a uh, sleep on it and see if you still feel that way tomorrow exactly like like that's how i choose to take it even yeah. if it is meant to be tongue-in-cheek yeah because so much of your emotions can change the next day exactly like completely agree like yes there's tongue-in-cheek like yes there can be like little drop of humor and like scented music too as well you know but like at the end of the day it's getting you through your really rough patch right now so that you're in a different mind state tomorrow whether you're still in a, in a bad mind state or not you're not in the exact same mind state you are right now and that could save your life so, it really can yeah. and i also realize this show is gonna be well over two hours <laughs> it is if you're uh, listening thank you thank you <laughs> and please donate even though we have no way for his to give us like if you see us anywhere just hand us some money thank you <laughs> yes no no um yes um, yes 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 <laughs> Uh, moving on to a little other music news. So The Ocean has had to cancel their uh, appearance for the next Rock Power. Uh, the organizers, organizers for Pog Power put out a statement. It is with regret that I announced The Ocean has canceled their appearance at Pog Power next September. The band reached out to me shortly after the festival last month and informed me of the issue. We tried to figure out a way that would allow the band to perform, but it's unclear whether or not that would be possible. Thus, I made the decision to pull the plug now and head into a new direction before taking for a day to go on sale. I have already begun working on our replacement and should be able to announce something ahead of our on-sale date for day two. The band also put out a statement saying, uh, with the Ocean's impending lineup change at the beginning of next year on the horizon and the fact that our work visas for the current lineup expired, we have to regretfully pull out of Bob Power USA 2025. Canceling shows is an absolute last resort for us and we're sorry for not being able to perform. We uh, heard only great things about Bob Power and hope to be able to play Bob Power at one point in the future. I love the Ocean. I love almost every album they've done uh the last one did not hit me yeah but i also kind of feel like that's why there's this uh, big old lineup change that they're going to be doing yeah they're finishing out their last shows and then there's going to be like a, a rebirth of the band whatever mm. that is gonna entail i have yeah. no idea yeah. they could get worse for all i know but i'm hoping it'll get better yeah uh i've interviewed the uh, frontman robin many times over the years in person uh, over the phone stuff like that I, I have two ocean shirts yes as well you do uh, my favorite one being uh, uh the whale getting attacked by the giant squid <laughs> one it's just so ocean nerdy but um it's it's sad seeing them do this because i felt like this could have got them some more fans but also let's call a spade a spade here when it comes to prog power it holds 900 people yeah like you're i couldn't imagine them just coming over here for just one show yeah for 900 people like they're a touring band that's what they do they right. would have to be touring around prog power and stuff like that and if mm. they don't even know what their lineup is gonna be and especially with the visas and stuff like that yeah like the band has to bow down and uh just like less than a month after the announcements mm -hmm. um they had to drop out and um how many other bands are gonna drop out of prog power for next year because it happens every time yeah it does. it's not the main reason but it's a very big reason why we don't try to go anymore because yeah. the lineup that we want to see might not be there exactly and don't want to just gamble on like well let's hope that they get there <laughs> And, of course, the Metal Fairy has no opinion on the ocean because she doesn't remember what they sound like. So, yeah. next story, please. Our final news story, uh, Mr. John More Sha heartbreaking stuff. Mr. John Schaefer. Um, so, he hasn't been sentenced yet, but there has been a recommendation that been put out by his camp. And what was that? Uh, yes, uh, they are hoping to have him sentenced to three years probation, pay $2,000 in restitution, and then another $200 in a special assessment. BS. Well... 
Do you know why this is the case? Because he ratted people out. Yeah. Uh Snitches get stitches, first of all. Yeah. (laughs) And second, you should be in prison for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And a few months after. Yeah, I mean, especially when you think about, like, other people who get way worse for way less. Like, Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people say we don't like to get political on this show, but if you've ever listened to us, you know where our morals and political (laughs) beliefs are. Yeah, Yeah. So it's like, don't really have to hit you over the head with the fact on where we stand. Mm -hmm. But I think it's pretty freaking clear that um, I can't condone anything John Schaefer does. No. And it's coming from both of us being longtime, if not lifetime, Iced Earth fans. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it breaks my heart. I can't listen to them anymore because it just drudges up all these feelings that I have. Yeah. Some of my favorite shows I ever went to were Iced Earth shows. Mm -hmm. You know, when we saw Iced Earth and Sabaton together at First Avenue, that's how we met Hanes. Yes. And that's how we met his partner. Or, mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say, yeah, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, she was opening up uh, with her band Revamped and they met on that tour. I and know, uh, I know. It, it proves you don't need marriage, first of all. And second, um, you know, you can find love on the road. It's true. Um, I guess that's basically my way of avoiding the fact that um, F John Schaefer. Yeah. Um, I hope Ice Earth never plays another show. Mm-hmm. And anyone who would dare be in his band again, I will never support you again. Oh, yeah. And that makes me really, really scared about a particular singer that used to be in Ice Earth who might jump at the chance I to know. be a part of that. I and know. If that ever happens, I'll be lying naked in the living room <laughs> in the fetal position sucking my thumb. <laughs> You. Yeah, I mean, I... No, he deserves more than that. And yeah, it's just... It sucks that their music is tainted. That's what I got. You said taint. All right, so next up, we thought that we should actually throw in a Halloween thing because, you know, Halloween is coming up next week and we haven't really done a lot. <laughs> Um, we don't even have decorations up in our I apartment, know. which is so unlike you. I know, I know. And it almost feels like if you put them up now, it's like, what's the point? Exactly, 100%. <laughs> We've left out Christmas stuff till April, but we couldn't even get up. Oh, we still have Christmas stuff up now Yeah, from last year. I was trying to avoid saying that. But no, uh, I own it. I own it. And it is staying out until Christmas this year. <laughs> <laughs> staying out till probably a, a professional assistance day in February, yeah, but we'll see. Heck, we're never putting it away. <laughs> Maybe not. Not till we get another place. But we figured we should at least do one Halloween theme thing this week. Yes. Uh, we're doing one another week. Uh, next week, uh, we're doing uh, uh, Heavy Debriefing's Most Evil Halloween 13. Yes. Where we'll be talking about the most scary songs and albums of 2024. Mm-hmm. But this week, we're going to be talking about the best and potentially worst horror movies of 2024 that we've seen. Yes. Um, I have a top five for the best and worst. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a top five? for the worst? Uh, no. I just wrote down a few of the worst. I didn't put them in any kind of order or anything, but my top ones I do have. Okay. Like. Well, I can go over my worst ones. Sure. As well, um, you know, end on the good note okay, with it. let's do that. Um, you, you put together a list of everything that's horror and horror adjacent, mm-hmm. and I eliminated the ones that are simply not horror. Yeah, I did too. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is not horror. Yeah. The some, Crow yeah. is not horror. I mean, depending on It was on a you horror show it. to watch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. same deal. Yeah, but I'll go over my top five uh, of the worst. Then uh, we'll probably go back and forth for the best. Okay, and I'll let you know if I have your worst on my worst list. Well, oh, I also have the rest I have on here as well. Okay. Because okay. um, I was thinking of uh, Homer when um, that nuclear bomb goes off in Springfield. Yeah. It's like a little Bart, little Lisa, little Marge, and the rest. Yes. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah. I have the I have three of those for the rest. Okay. And I'll go from the bottom to the top. Okay. Uh, the bottom one I have for the rest. So these are the ones that would be sitting right in the middle of everything. Okay. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just movies we saw. Okay. Uh, the first one would be Salem's Lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most it, it's the standard bearer of inconsequential horror movies that we've seen this year. Yeah. It did not need to be made. Mm-hmm. There was no reason to remake the original. They did nothing different except make it into uh, half the length because uh, the original is four hours. It was a two part uh, TV series and uh, this is just like a little under two hours movie um not really a lot to say about it uh next was arcadian uh the other nicholas cage movie that we saw this year i found so much of it to be so freaking boring (laughs) i really really hated the ending yeah and we should have just paid the five bucks to watch it on shutter yeah and even though i love this movie it was neither worst nor best but it is this is basically a sixth place for me okay abigail okay um it's basically a remake of dracula's daughter but set in the modern 
modern age. I thought it was really funny. I thought there was some great blood and atmosphere stuff going on. I love the character of Abigail and how that all came together. I know a lot of people poo-pooed all over it, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I've seen a lot of love for it, though, too. I I've seen it both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then again, I've seen people say the new one to others sounds like Blink-182, so I don't know what the frick to believe. <laughs> and I say they're nuts. Yes. Uh, so, going into my uh, top five uh, for the worst. The worst, way. Right. Um, should I go with the worst movie first or the least offensive movie first? Whatever you want to do. Mine aren't in order, so. All right. All right. Well, worst, I'll start with the ones that I thought were, it, it'll get progressively worse. We'll okay. do it that way. Okay. Uh, starting that off is Maxine. Okay. I loved three fourths of this movie and I feel like it turned into an absolute dumpster fire at the very end. <laughs> um, I love the, the Maxine trilogy so much. Uh, Pearl is the best one of all three. Mm. X was an excellent slasher movie and lots of boobies if uh, <laughs> that's what makes you want to go see it. Yes. It's amazing how a movie called X that is about making adult movies is rated R. Right. It should have been X. Yeah. Because that's still a rating system but uh, I digress. But uh, Maxine like so much of it was so good and then it just fell off a cliff. Uh, next up at the number four spot is Alien Romulus. It's basically the first Alien movie just updated enough to tell a different story. It takes place between Alien and Aliens and if this movie never came out it doesn't affect the other two so what is the point? Uh, number three why can't I die no no regrets <laughs> yes the front room starring brandy this movie had so much potential and it feels like they had an idea for a story and then someone came in and said okay we lost all of our funding so we just have to shoot what we have <laughs> but what about the rest of the story we can't finish it <laughs> like there's so many directions this could have went into mm -hmm. and it went into all of the wrong ones yeah and it also gave me some trauma flashbacks as uh the elderly mother in the movie reminded me so much of what my mom used to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for all those reasons and more. Uh, number two, I have Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. This movie had a bigger budget, a more competent story, it was shot better, and it had more fanfare. And I still find it to be a bigger abomination than the original Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> I thought this movie absolutely sucks. It undoes everything from the first movie. At least with the original movie, the concept of how all the critters from the Hundred Acre Wood came to be this does undoes all of it and i hate it for that reason so much plus everything else that's wrong with this movie and i know there's going to be a third because they heavily heavily tease it and of course heffalump has to show up at some point right and what about kanga and rue i mean there's so many directions that they could go into and it's just going to suck and number one if you didn't figure it out when you listened to the beginning of the show it is of course the mouse trap one of the most offensively crappy movies i've ever seen not just horror just in general just one of the worst abominations of a movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And we already talked about that in detail and if you skipped it, go back to the beginning of the show. <laughs> so, what say you? Um, so your three worst are also my three worst. <laughs> Again, I didn't put them in any particular order, but I'll just quick touch base on them. You covered quite a bit, but like, the front room, I just keep coming back to the complete lack of chemistry between Brandy and the guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> There is no freaking way they were a married couple. Like, these and they are had strangers. that many kids at the end. <laughs> these are strangers they planted in a house together. Like, why does she even care about the mom? Like, why are they together? Why? Why? Um, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, you alluded to it, but like the first Winnie the Pooh was terrible as well. But at least with that, it's like it took these innocent characters that you know and showed how like they went feral. Whereas this movie, it's like these abominations. Like, they were never these innocent, like, little animals. They, ugh. and then finally, the mouse trap i mean we got into it earlier but no girl no so that's i got it but you know darn well we're gonna see blood and honey 3 and we're gonna see the mouse trap too of course we are why for the, because for we content. hate ourselves for the content <laughs> and for the content but really we just hate ourselves okay so should we go back and forth what your number five is yeah that's five is? that's what i was thinking like okay. uh, i didn't know who was gonna go first but i was thinking we just went back and forth okay, okay. oh i'll do it uh number five is long legs okay the superior nicholas cage horror movie this year yeah, yeah um okay. it's really more of a crime thriller but there is an enough horror to it as well mm -hmm. it's set in the early 90s which is uh, quite nostalgic for me but not the reason to go see it mm -hmm. the real reason is to see nick cage basically singing gong it's <laughs> like how has he not played more serial killers in his career yeah he's done it before but he should be typecasted as a serial killer because he's so perfect at it yeah um you really had no way of knowing what direction this movie was going to be going into it was absolutely butt poop insane um i 
just really enjoyed it. My number five is The Substance. Wow. Okay. Well, no, no, okay. go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, number one, I love a good body horror movie, but like, we talked about this at the time when we watched it, but like, this one shocked me because I didn't expect this kind of body horror from like Demi Moore and like actual like uh, legitimate actors and stuff. <laughs> um, but it definitely like, it kind of took Hollywood and like imagery of women and like everything and just flipped it on its head and like poked apart all kinds of like standards that are out there and it's it's crazy but i love it yeah did you notice um huey from the boys his dad um forgetting his name Mm -hmm. his name in the movie was harvey oh (laughs) i i don't think i caught that now yeah that's funny (laughs) what could that be alluding to right right um number four late night with the devil i am not a fan of possession movies Mm -hmm. uh i'm not a big fan of the ghosts and goblins and demons and stuff like that yeah this is such an exception to all of that Mm -hmm. uh it is a movie that takes place in the late 70s Mm -hmm. Uh, a failing late night talk show brings on someone who is possessed and so many things start to happen throughout the entire broadcast um it is polka dot man from uh the suicide squad (laughs) as the talk show host and uh it is a low budget movie but it is so freaking effective i just love this movie so very very much and i'm surprised it's only at number four but there was three other movies that caught my attention just a little bit more all right my number four is crazy house oh um so this was more recent one um so it's basically a horror movie in the context of a sitcom (laughs) like (laughs) a 90s sitcom yeah it starts off as like this total like whole housey type sitcom but like crazy um and then it like well the name of the sitcom is crazy house yes yes um then it falls into this dark horror movie and it brings you to a point where you forget you're still watching a sitcom universe (laughs) oh but they remind you (laughs) they do remind you it's bloody it's crazy it's it's funny it's it's everything you could want yeah right on my number three is the substance i figured this one would have been higher for you but uh everything that you said uh is what gets made me so excited about this it's a look at the state of the world that we're in right now it's about body image Mm -hmm. it's about getting older it's about uh being a woman in uh a famous world Mm -hmm. uh all the sick people around you and the lifestyle that can come from all of that and not wanting to let that go Mm -hmm. and sadly you can almost attach that to the one direction story that we talked about in the news yeah because once you lose stuff things can get that rough oh yeah and you can get desperate like that Mm -hmm. if there was literally a substance like that in the world how many people would actually take it a lot yeah it's (laughs) a a scary thought yeah Mm -hmm. um but um it starts off is like almost like a black mirror episode Mm -hmm. and then it turns into a gore show at the end (laughs) yeah (laughs) like it gets so raw and disgusting so much it becomes comical at the end like you can't stop laughing at the Mm -hmm. absurdity that starts happening towards the end of it yeah yeah like it's darkly funny it's a great look at the state of the world that we live in especially through the hollywood lens it's just a fantastic one of the best body horror movies i've ever seen my number three is Abigail. Ooh. So I like this one a lot when it came out, but it's grown on me even more after. Have you seen th- it since then? No, but just like thinking back on it and stuff. It's like, I feel like, I mean, Dracula himself has done so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's done so much. But then like when you go into like the side characters, like like the daughter of Dracula and stuff like that, you don't see that as often. No. And so. I mean, it's a remake of an almost 100 year old movie. Yeah. So getting to see that kind of a side of things and see like this little girl who's so number one i mean on one like side is a little girl but then on another side is so like sophisticated like she dances ballet and like has this classical side to her but then she's a monster swan lake by the way yes but then there's this monster side to her as well it's just such a unique perspective i feel like in in horror um and like i just i just love that that kind of world and stuff and i love i love dracula like kind of feeling of dracula movies overall but like this one i just thought was really a thing and I, I, I enjoyed it. And the reason I bring up the Swan Lake reference is yeah. because it goes back to the original Dracula. Yeah. Because before they started making original music for movies, Dracula's theme was the theme from Swan Lake. Yeah. I love how they tied that together so much. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, that was number six for me, but I loved it so much. Mm-hmm. I, I know what your number one is. It's uh, pretty evident. Well, two more. Oh. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> that was number three. Yep. I messed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I might have nailed it. Uh, my number two is Terrifier 3. Um, this can, this is the fifth movie in the Art the Clown series. 
Mm-hmm. Again, we haven't seen the first two. Um, we should do that at some point. Mm-hmm. But we have seen Terrifier 1, 2, and now 3. Yeah. This is the best of the three Terrifier movies. It's a new Christmas classic. <laughs> um, it has the most insane, brutal kills that have happened in the series so far, which means that every subsequent movie is just going to get more and more insane. Um, it's so darkly funny as well, too. I think it's the funniest of all of them so mm-hmm. far. Like, it, it knows what it is at this point. Yeah. Um, the whole story that basically started with Terrifier 2 because uh, the original Terrifier was kind of just like, who is Art the Clown? Yeah. Terrifier 2 is where the story actually begins. Yeah. And Terrifier 3 is kind of just like part two, really. But I love the story that it's going. It has a Empire Strikes Back feeling where it's such a downer, but you know it's going to rise up in the next movie. Mm-hmm. I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I love, um, it's not ruining anything, but Tom Savini's in it for a guest spot. Yeah. Clint Howard, Ice Cream Man himself, <laughs> is in here as well. And no, I don't mean Bill Skarsgård. I mean the actual Clint Howard. <laughs> you never know when you're talking about him. That's true. I've mentioned that many times on the show that I consider Bill Skarsgård to be the Clint Howard of the yes. Skarsgård brothers. Mm-hmm. For anyone that's not familiar. But uh, yeah, I just think it's one of the most great, brutal horror movies I've seen. They also cross the line. Like the one thing you're never supposed to do in horror movies, which I'm not going to say, it's the very first kill. The one thing you're not supposed to do. Like, you can do everything but this. It was the very first one. And I applaud them for that. <laughs> also, the actor for Earth Clown, very much on the left. And I really appreciate that. So, yeah. Yes. Number two, Terrifier 3. My number two is also Terrifier 3. <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, you covered most of it, but I'll just go into art a little bit more. I just love this character. He is stepping up to be one of the main men, villains of horror movies. And like, I love that he's growing a franchise out under him him now like i want to see a crossover him versus freddy or some craziness at some point like he just he's bloody as can be but then he has this charm about him too just that little wave and smile i've seen it on threads so much there is this absolute fan base that wants nothing more than to be with our clown i'm sure there is i am not one of them but i get it i get it though because he has that charm about him you know totally bad understand. He's a bad boy, bad boy at heart all right well now i don't know what your number one's gonna be okay because I really thought that was going to be your number one. I figured you thought that. But um, I'm pretty sure you know my number one. Pretty sure I do too. Of course it is. Crazy House. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nick Frost, Olivia, uh, Alicia Silverstone. Uh, I never thought of them as a couple no. in my wildest dreams. No. no. But they work together so very well as this uh, Christian family. Not that they're just, not just that they're a Christian worshiping family, but their last name is Christian as yes. well. <laughs> But um, yeah, you basically covered it. It's a 90s sitcom that turns into this satanic horror movie. Mm-hmm. So it, it, done in such a way, you completely forget that it was a, a sitcom in the beginning. Yes. Then there's one key moment that reminds you that it's still a sitcom. <laughs> and it's the best freaking part of the entire movie. Yes. Um, No, just like seeing what happens to the son, what happens to the daughter, the other people that are involved with all of it. It's It can be cheesy. I mean, especially especially with like some of how they do some of the stuff um like the whole sitcom thing like it nails that 90s sitcom imagery perfectly Mm -hmm. i've never seen it done better and yeah and then it just gets into this whole satanic thing that goes into all of it i saw one review as we were about to put it on prime where it says like it's it's an adult swim episode if it was directed by a black metal band (laughs) and i think that's the perfect description of this yeah yeah and also i need more of Nick Frost doing horror movies because he is excellent at it. Mm. Whether he's just playing this quirky Christian dad with these really bad <laughs> false teeth, yes. or he's this absolute stud of a hero at the end. <laughs> and everything that he does that I won't say here, but it's like some of the best death scenes I've seen all year. Yeah. Especially considering who he does it to, mm-hmm. which is just, mwah. Yeah, just it's becoming one of my favorite movies the more time goes on. Very I can't nice. recommend Crazy House enough. Very nice. And and my number one is Late Night with the Devil. Oh! Why is this surprise to you? I didn't think you had that much attachment to it. Yeah. When we talked about it, like, you enjoyed it, but I never heard you talk 
about it ever since. Well, I mean, we haven't really talked about any movies since we saw them. Well, we do occasionally. Mainly just right after we see them. Well, this makes me very, very happy. But I mean, no, continue. Yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about unique movies, this is a unique movie. I've never seen any movie done like this before. It's basically done real time, quote unquote. Um, I mean, it's totally, you're in the 70s. You're in this studio of this show being done. And it's very much reality based. Like you're there witnessing this, seeing all this craziness live firsthand, which just adds to the mood of it, the environment of it, the scariness of it. And one of the things that I love and I want to see, like if I had to create a horror movie or see like a continuation of a movie, this one alludes to, and, and there have been other movies that have alluded to this, but basically there being this like seedy underground cult in Hollywood for men, especially back in that time, that like if you wanted to make it, like you had to be part of this group and sell your soul to the devil or whatever the case may have been um and that's kind of how you gained any fame in hollywood and this kind of takes you through a little bit of that because the the host uh, you know had fame then he lost it and he was trying to get it back which that in itself goes back to substance but from the male perspective <laughs> but um it, like i want to see that like lashed out because if i were to be a conspiracy theorist over anything this is one of the things i would be that like i truly could believe that there is a cult in hollywood even to this day where like these people are selling their souls or something crazy is happening that is allowing male stars to become male stars and yeah. i cannot recommend this movie enough it is perfection it is the best movie of 2024 and i haven't even seen all the horror movies i want to see this year yet but this is it so it beats deadpool and wolverine i said horror movies no you you said it's the best movie of 2024 it's the best horror movie of 2024. Yeah, we're gonna play sure the tape after okay let's play it after <laughs> um overall i haven't thought about yet maybe we'll find that out next month sometime probably well or in december rather i will say that makes me very very happy yeah and i'm so happy that so many of the movies that you've enjoyed i've recommended mm -hmm. like i'm showing you horror movies that you're enjoying yeah when uh it used to be the other way around when we were first together Th this just makes me happy yeah i'm so happy about that and i'm so happy that was number one and i'm so blessed you're at <laughs> who, who does that i don't know okay i still think of yari every time exactly but, exactly uh, so what about you of course not all the horror movies have come out so far of course we haven't seen vhs beyond you know the greatest anthology series of all time yes vhs so uh you know there's still plenty we need to catch up on but what are your favorite horror movies this year what are your least favorite horror movies this year are we right for our opinions are we wrong is there anything that we missed out that we should check out please let us know down below all right and what will hopefully be our shortest segment or it'll be the next one we'll figure it out it is time for some blind rankings yes uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, the short and thick of it is we do a top five on anything. We give it to each other. We list five. The other person ranks it. And when we're done with all five, you're allowed to make one switch. Get it? Got it? Good. I went first the last two times, so I think it's only fair that you go first this time. All right. Um, Up first, so we covered a lot of your chicken favorites in the previous episodes. Now we're going to cover your favorite fries. Oh, okay. Uh, first, checkers. One. Parties. Two. McDonald's. Just to leave some room for... KFC. Three. Five guys. Five guys is number five. five. Okay. Um... You want a reminder? Yeah. yeah. You almost had them in order. So five is five guys, four McDonald's, three KFB, two Hardee's, one Checkers. I will replace four and five. Okay. So McDonald's is at the bottom, despite the fact that I love McDonald's fries. Oh. And we're probably getting McDonald's after we're done recording. McDonald's! 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 Yeah. So number five, McDonald's. Number four, five guys. Number three, KFB. Number two, Hardee's. Number one, Checkers. Completely and utterly fine with that. Okay. All right. Uh, this one, I think is kind of appropriate for the autumn time of year okay. where things are nice and cozy. Your relaxation games. Okay. Animal Crossing. Mm, four. Vampire Survivors. Five. Power Wash Simulator. Three. Bubble Bobble. Two. And number one makes all the sense in the world as that is Skyrim. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to change? Um, I would switch Bubble Bobble and um, Power Wash Simulator. Okay. So doing that, number five is Vampire Survivors. Number four is Animal Crossing. Three is Bubble Bobble. Two is Power Wash Simulator. And one one is Skyrim. Yes. Yeah. Accurate. Up next for you, we have anti-heroes. <sighs> 
Deadpool. <laughs> what? You want to go through it? Uh, I think you mean anti-hero. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Deadpool. Two. Punisher. Three. Wolverine. Four. Blade. Five. Spawn is number one. I am completely fine with that. Okay. Just for the people at home, uh, number five, Blade. Number four, Wolverine. Number two, Punisher. Number, uh, or sorry, number three, Punisher. Number two, Deadpool. And number one, Spawn. Yeah. Okay. Completely and utterly. All right. All right. Um, this one is meant to, um, I wanted to make this a topic on the show, but um, by the time we're done with this segment, it's already going to be over two hours. Yeah. But I wanted to bring up the fact that um, we don't, we're not watching wrestling anymore. Yes. But I did have this before we made the decision to basically be done for now. Okay. Top five factions. Are they current or of all time? You'll see. Okay. It, it'll be of all time. Okay. Yeah. Bullet Club. Now, are we saying what the Bullet Club is right now or in their heyday? You can use whatever you want. Oh, <gasps> we'll go with in their heyday. Okay. Because now it's a joke. Well, but... I mean, I don't even think there's an original member of Bullet Club <sighs> left. I don't think there is either. But in their heyday, I would go number two. I like you were going to say two. DX. Three. Blood Bond 64. Four. The Brood. One. That leaves number five with the Ministry of Darkness. Okay, so tell me where I have things. Number one is The Brood. Number two, Bullet Club. Three, DX. Four is Blood Bond 64. And five is the Ministry of Darkness. You are going to have to switch Bullet Club and uh, uh, Ministry of Darkness. Re- are you sure? I mean, Christabel. Fair. But uh, it's just, it's quite the jump. I know. This isn't where I put my full list. Okay. But. So number five is Bullet Club. Number oh four is Blood Bond 64. Yeah. Number three is DX. Number two is the Ministry of Darkness. And of course, number one is the Brood. One and two are correct. Then three should be Bullet Club. Well, that's not the world we live but in, is it? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Your final one. Adult animated shows originating in the 2010s or later. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing that one. <laughs> no, I, that was the one I was going to pick. Was More or less, that was the one I had up next that's for funny. you. That's funny. Bob's Burgers. Two. Rick and Morty. Four. Big Mouth. Three. The Great North. Five. Bojack. One. Okay, so one Bojack, two Bob's Burgers, three Big Mouth, four Rick and Marty, Morty, five Great North. I am going to switch Rick and Morty and the Great North. Okay. Biggest reason for that, we haven't kept up with Rick and Morty. It's the only one that we haven't kept up with. That's true. So, final, one Bojack, two Bob's Burgers, three Big Mouth, four Great North, five Rick and Morty. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we kind of touched on him earlier, so I'm going to I'm gonna bring this one up now. Okay. The top five Kevin Smith movies. Oh, I made them ones you'll probably remember. Okay. The fourth 30 movie. Five. Ouch. Clerks 3. Two. Tusk. Three. You swore. I said shoot. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, I did say shoot. Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Four. And that'll leave number one is Red State. That's fair. That's fair. Um, do you want me to go over it again? Or? Sure. Yeah, go over it. All right. Number five is the 430 movie. Number four is Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Three is Tusk. Two is Clerks 3. And number one is Red State. You know what? We're going to switch Tusk and uh, uh, Clerks 3. Really? Mm-hmm. W- why is that? I mean, I like horror based stuff. I mean, Clerks 3 hit me emotionally but I don't have the same emotional investment in the Kirk series that you have whereas Tusk is just funny and morbid and crazy and I love it. Well fair enough so going over this again number 5 is the 430 movie, 4 is Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, 3 is Clerks 3, 2 is Tusk and 1 is Red State. Yes. Do you feel Red State is better than Tusk? I enjoy it more I mean I like making fun of those people (laughs) and of course uh, Ralph Garman gets shot in the head Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Alright so that's the blind rankings that we have for for this week what'd you think did we make some good choices are these fun topics are you sick of this do you enjoy it do you have any recommendations for top fives that we could be doing in the future of course as i mentioned before let us know down below all right kids we finally hit the halfway part part of the show <laughs> so yes we got another two hours to look forward to oh. no it's not gonna take that long we're we're gonna try to zip by the rest of this but we do have a lot more coming up we do but we do have the most popular part of the show show right here right now just like jesus jones was all about it is accountability 101 where i have the metal fairy check out one band and one album that she said that she was always going to check out but never did so i hold her accountable to do this ah i get it last week we covered metal church in blessing in disguise which you thoroughly enjoyed and possibly found your favorite metal church song possibly but we do have the follow-up album which is probably my 
favorite of the two. Okay. I said I was going to announce next week, uh, the following week, what uh, my favorite one was, but I do feel it is the human factor. Um, I really feel like Mike Howe really found who he was on this vocally. I really love everything that's going on here. And it's one of the best 90s albums ever made, whether it's thrash, heavy metal, or just music in general. I just love this album and it hits me so deep, deep emotionally. I could go more and more into this, but you should just check out last week's show to hear more of my thoughts on Metal Church. Let's just get into it. This is the double shot of Metal Church, part two, The Human Factor. Metal Fairy, do your thing. Okay, number one, uh, The Human Factor. Um, Definitely very thrashy meets some element of glam. Um, Very catchy. The vocals are amazing. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, The second song, Date with Poverty. Kind of similar vibes musically to the first, but a little bit more dynamic, I would say, and a little bit more hard-hitting. Um, very catchy chorus. Good song. Uh, third song, The Final Word. It's a bit yay America from the liberal side. I'm fine with that. That's why I, I love Sacred Reich so much. I mean, I like that it's from the liberal side, but it's still using the whole, you don't like it here, buy your ticket kind of thing. I've always hated that. It, sidebar. We were going through fast food yeah. uh, in the past week, and we saw a bumper sticker on a lifted truck that said if you don't like it here I'll help you pack yeah and I was just thinking well I really do want to get out of my apartment uh I mean <laughs> if you're willing to help us move into our next place for free right, I mean I would right. really appreciate it exactly um that said I mean still a catchy song it is a little bit darker I would say um musically than the previous two songs um the fourth song in morning the vocals are crazy on this one it's a little bit dialed back but still heavy still dynamic uh dark sounding um very catchy again really like the chorus definitely a Emotional. The car's amazing. I, I do really like this song. Uh, the fifth song, In Harm's Way. My favorite Metal Church song. Yep, this one I recognize, and right away I'm like, yep, there's that Metal Church ballad. <laughs> I, I love this song. It's emotional, dark, dynamic. The vocals are amazing. The guitar's amazing. Catchy. Yeah, this is this is what I like in Metal Church. And all too relatable. Yeah. Um, The sixth song in due time. This one's a little bit more thrash again, but hard to kind of dial back. Um, Super catchy again. The vocals amazing. Guitar's amazing. Slow down. Look, you want to get through this today or tomorrow? <laughs> I'm thinking about the audience here. Fine, fine. The seventh song, Agent Green. This one, again, is a little bit more dialed back. The music has a little bit of a slow please rock vibe to it um catch your uh, very catchy chorus so good song uh the eighth song flee from reality not my type of flea different type of flea. um <laughs> leaving not the book yes um this one's definitely a more fast paced again very thrashy the guitar solo is really good on this one the ninth song betrayed this one's definitely moody it's catchy but a bit more dialed back in some of the songs uh good song though and finally the tenth song the fight song not be confused with taylor song taylor swift um this one do you next. think she got the inspiration to write her version of fight song I'd for like metal church i believe that i'd like to believe that this one's definitely faster it has very catchy chorus again the guitar is amazing on this one overall i really enjoy it i feel like this album versus the last album is more thrashy and less glam elements that i caught in the last one um i i love love the the um ballad in harm's way i also really liked in mourning i i think overall i might like the last album more just because i do love me a little bit more of the glam feeling more than the thrash feeling now you know why i was so torn when yeah. i was trying to choose between these yeah. two but both of them have some amazing songs like the ballads are really where why i'm here <laughs> Oh, of course it is. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Good album. Good album. Mm -hmm. I love the faster metal church, but their ballads are the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that is the double shot of metal church over the past two weeks. I'll ask the same questions as last week. Do you like metal church? Have you never heard them before? Do you not like metal church? Are you interested in checking these albums out now that we covered them? Let us know down below. But before we go, we have 15 entries into the spin the choice wheel to find out what we're going to be playing for Halloween week. Are we going to land on a Halloween type album and band are we just gonna land on some random thing we're about to find out as we spin the choice I can't wait to see what it lands on oh oh we have done this before and we will be doing it again it is up to the metal fairy we landed on the metal fairy's choice so I'm assuming this means I get to choose one of them 
from the wheel. You can choose one from the wheel. You can listen to a second album from a band that you enjoyed. Gotcha. Uh, if there's a band that's just sticking out to you that we haven't covered, we can do that. Let me take a look at wheel. Anything. That's not all the entries. I got more. Oh, you're reading the actual wheel, not the yeah. what was here. Yep, I was I'm, waiting I'm to waiting scroll down. <laughs> you know what? Let's keep it in, in, in the Halloween spirit. Let's do some typo. That's honestly what I was hoping we were going to land yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, it's only appropriate that we cover who many consider to be the sexiest man that's ever lived in metal. The nearly seven foot giant known as Peter Steele <laughs> yes. and Typo Negative. And I know you're probably going to want to hear the album that has Black Number One, I mean... Little Miss Carol. But I don't think that's the best type O album. What if I do two of them? You could if you want to. I mean, we could do it over two weeks or if, um, just keep in mind how many albums you're going to be checking out next week. Okay, well, let's establish the one you want me to do. And then if I have it in me, I'll do the one with lack number one too. <sighs> I am kind of torn because there's there are two of them. Well, I mean, if you really do want to include that one, I have three albums that I'm torn between. Okay, so tell me what 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 are the albums? Why what is what's on each one that I might already know? You know what? Screw it. We're just gonna do the '94 album, Bloody Kisses. Okay, tell that is that is the one with uh, Black Number One on there. Okay. Um, this one still kind of has more of the metal side to them as well. Okay, but it starts to incorporate the more goth elements to it okay i was also thinking of october rust where is where i really start to feel like they start to get into the goth rock yeah and then what i think is their best album world coming down is the is like a, the quintessential goth typo album to me are there songs i know from either of the latter two um october rust uh my girlfriend's girlfriend okay okay she okay. looks like you okay okay um world coming down I don't know what you know and what you don't know. Okay. Um, also, October Rust does uh, have Red Water Christmas Morning, which has uh, the goth version of Carol of the Bells on it okay. as well, which is like uh, one of the most haunting versions of a Christmas song I've ever heard. Well, okay. I, to, but overall, as a full album, I feel like World Coming Down is the best, but I'm yeah. not against any of these that you want to choose. Okay, the first one you talked about. Bloody Kisses. Bloody Kisses. So let's do Bloody Kisses, but if I have it in me, I'm going to do October Rust as well, because these sound like they're like perfect for this time okay. of the year for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean, if you want to do a double shot, we certainly, certainly can. Okay. But um. Yeah. Um. Just so you're aware, there's two versions on Spotify of Bloody Kisses. There's also yeah. a, a top shelf version. Okay. Um. Which has a uh, a couple different versions of other songs on here as well. But uh, that that's up to you which one you want to choose. But yeah. uh, preliminary, we're going to be doing typo negative with Bloody Kisses next week on Accountability 101. And just in case the metal fairy gets a little saucy we're gonna do a double shot featuring what is usually considered to be one of the two best typo negative albums october rust all right next up is uh, the newly named segment of the show and <laughs> i just i love calling it this because it just feels so appropriate yeah. pick up your little black book kids as we go through the hot sexy singles right. that have been released in the past week or at least the songs that we've checked out in the past week not albums not even is not anything like that. Brand new singles from bands. Okay. Up first, we have Suotana with Foreverland. Uh, yes, we discovered this band last year. One of your favorite albums of last year. Yes. It might have been number one, right? Um, It was in my top five. I don't remember if it was one, but it was up there. That would be really interesting to go through and like go back to last year's list and see what, yeah. what it's still there. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is a Finnish mellow death, folk metal, a little bit of power, a little bit of symphonic, uh, everything that I love that comes from Finland and uh, they have a new album coming out next year and or no or no wait I'm thinking of a different band yeah this one comes out in 2025 and it's absolutely spectacular yeah I absolutely love this single heavy melodic oaky very dynamic the vocals are so powerful the keys are amazing the guitars are amazing yeah it's great up next <laughs> a little off off our normal route but we checked out Breaking Benjamin with Awaken yeah um, it came up on YouTube after after uh, after uh, watching a crossfade documentary yes. that came out, yes, um, Breaking Benjamin came up on there. I wonder why. Um, it 
sounds like every other Breaking Benjamin song. Sometimes they get a little heavier, sometimes they're a little more subdued, but they have that formula that they've had since the very first album. It's never going to change, and honestly, they don't need the change because it's what you're looking for in the band. Yeah. You're not looking for them to do anything other than this. Yeah. So if they keep doing it, good on them. Yeah, I agree. It's Breaking Benjamin. I mean, it's easy, catchy music or paper radio. <laughs> yeah, it's that background radio rock music. Yes. That's what it is. Up next, we have Sodakra with a needed domain. Now, this is actually coming out in November after not even realizing that uh, they were going to be having a new album out so soon. <sighs> And I can't wait to check that out. Okay. Um, I know how much this band means to you, so that's just gonna... <laughs> well, no, I would have said something that would have spoiled something for later. But um, yeah. I know this um, This will probably be entering your top list. <laughs> I mean... I mean, how yeah. could it not? Yeah. What, this is the album that's not gonna do it? <laughs> it's starting to have almost a hundred albums on my list. Well, that's what I was right trying now. to avoid saying. Is uh, uh, I mean, I don't know where I was gonna, gonna say this is album 93 to enter your yeah. list. I don't know where I'm gonna land on my total numbers, but... We'll yeah see. i i think it's i think once you hear it i think it's gonna rank pretty high and i can't wait to hear it myself mm-hmm. i don't have the pr for this so i'm gonna have to wait till the friday after it comes out that's only fair because mm-hmm. i can't review something i haven't heard but yeah much like a sotana um Sudakra has been doing this longer but th- they have that mellow death sound very folky thrashy in the right parts a little bit of black metal going on um it's just that what you imagine finished death metal to all be about and it's glorious yeah i love 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 sadakra i've been a long time fan of theirs um aggressive melodic hokey dark moody lean in the right spot the vocals both lean and harsh are amazing like they just write them the catchiest music ever and i love them and i cannot wait for this album up next we have devin townsend with gratitude this is an album that comes out on friday as you're listening to this i did not get the album promo so i'll be doing my album review next week for that after mm-hmm. it comes out for the exact same reason I talked about Sudakra. This, from everything that I've heard about all three singles, the first single is what I was hoping for. It's fast, fun, catchy. The other two singles are very slow, subdued, introspective songs. And that's not what I wanted this album to be because he's been doing that a lot lately. But at the same time, who am I to tell Devin Townsend what to do? <laughs> he's made this many albums, he is allowed to make any kind of music that he wants to. But I do feel like this one is just just not gonna hit me like it's the single was fine by itself but from the impressions that i'm getting it feels like the whole album is more or less gonna be like this and when it's called power nerd that's not what i want you this song is in video but it's very hokey it's very cheesy positive like this is the type of character i envision saying hey how's your day going and they respond with the old living the dream i can't imagine Devin ever actually saying that in this video i can i never thought i'd be able to say that about him Have you ever been in the forests of Canada? You know very well. Have have you ever been in the forests of British Columbia? (laughs) No, I have not. Then you don't know what it's like to experience that. if you respond with living the dream, let me show you my nightmare. Onward. Yeah, it's, to me, it's like uh, when you give the thumb emoji. Yeah. Just no, don't. Up next, we have Hangman's Chair with Who A.M. Thought. Yeah, um, this made me cry. Yeah. Um, this came out a few weeks back, but I had no idea. Finally caught up on it. Um, I'm, I think this is the first single off their new album i haven't seen an album announcement yet this could have been a b-side off of a loner for all i know um this could just be a one-off single whatever the case is it's a very strong powerful song that really does continue on what they started with a loner it's doom it's 80s goth just mainstream enough all clean vocals and the most devastating lyrics that you can hear in this style um and the video that matches up with it just broke my heart yeah i love it yeah. musically definitely play some catchy dynamic stuff i didn't have the lyrics in front of me and i couldn't really understand them because i just have a hard time understanding lyric a lot of times but i i got the message from the video like it's if you haven't seen it it's this person who's kind of getting out there taking their meds they're doing their chores they're working out they're being active they're doing everything that everyone always says like hey you're struggling with mental health or addiction or whatever
harder. Like get out and do these things that'll help you. And not saying that they don't help anybody, but you go through and you do all these things and it's great you're doing them. But at the end of the day, you're still struggling. So those 2 a.m. thoughts, they're real. And these things don't always hear those. Things. Who better than I to know that in yeah, real life? Like, exactly. I've done everything I was told I was supposed to do. I've mm -hmm. lost, I lost a hundred pounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was on medication. Mm -hmm. I went therapy. I saw yep. a psychiatrist. I went to the doctors. I have an exercise bike. I, mm -hmm. I try to leave the house. I try to do different things. I try to do the things that make me happy. Mm -hmm. I try to be as well rested as I possibly can. All these different things. Yeah. Not one of those things has helped with my mental health. Right. And I hate it. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me break down because it is all too relatable for someone like me. Definitely. And again, that's not to say none of those things work because clearly it does or else those things wouldn't still be happening. Yeah. But it's not the case for everybody. Yeah. And I wish people understood that more when it comes to mental health that there is no cure. There is no one all trick that's going to make everything better. Yeah. Every person, every mind is different. Like and that's not the only way we're going to be crying, but no. uh, that's coming up later. Yes. Up next, we had Dax Riggs with the Seaver. I could have cried during this one because of uh, how much I didn't <laughs> like it. For different reasons, yes. <laughs> <sighs> to say that I'm a huge fan of everything Dax Riggs has done outside of Acid Bath would be me lying. <laughs> um, he's done a lot of blues rock stuff, some indie rock stuff, some acoustic stuff, but I don't mind the acoustic stuff. Acoustic stuff can be great. Um, when I saw him, when I interviewed him, he was doing all of his solo work and it really comes off well in a live setting. But this is the first new material since I've interviewed him. I interviewed him in 2012 and this is his first new music since that time. And you put out one of the most bland, boring songs I've heard in this style where it feels like there's only two riffs and the last riff only comes in at like 30, 45 seconds left in the song. No, why did you do this to me? Please <laughs> don't let this be a representation for everything else that's going to be coming out and whatever the release will be. I don't, I don't know if this is a standalone single or whatever's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Please don't let this indicate where you're going in the future because this was just bland and boring. Yeah, I don't really have much to add. This is not for me. It was just blah. <laughs> and that can summarize it for me. <laughs> Up next, her other prior for the week, um, her Curie for the Sky with Autumn, I'll Surrender. Yes, uh, I believe the album is coming out in January or February. Um, if you're not familiar with her Curie for the Sky, they're a post-black band that has always been very, very emotional. Like, if you ever sit down and read their lyrics, like, I can understand why if you don't understand them, but if you go and look them up, they will rip your soul apart. Mm -hmm. Like, it just hits so freaking hard. But this time around, without even looking at the lyrics the video is one of the most heartbreaking music videos i've ever Ooh. seen in my entire life yeah and we were both bawling at the end of it <laughs> like it just hit us both so very very hard it's absolutely that dark beautiful sentiment going on that the band has always been known for but when you see it visually <sighs> I'm kind of choking up thinking about it right now, but yes. uh, yeah, I haven't had a video hit me that hard in a very, very long time. And yeah, early contender for album of the year 2025 for me. Yeah, really good. Very dynamic, very just emotionally driven. The video is just, it just grabs you, like not only the story in the video, but like applying this to so many things in the world right now. I won't, I won't give it away. I'll let you go watch it yourself, but like, yeah, heartbreaking. And then finally- and That's not all the heartbreaking. Yeah, <laughs> I was making a choke about. Oh the next one this is not heartbreaking i know <laughs> up next finally uh for hot sexy singles we have diane featuring marcella bovio with laneborn yeah um the thumbnail of this video made me very very concerned that uh diane uh, had abandoned everything that she was ever known for and jumped on the uh mainstream modern metal trend that every other symphonic uh artist is doing nowadays mm -hmm, yeah just completely abandoning the symphonic sound for beep boops Beep don't get me wrong there's some good beep boop metal out there but i don't want to hear diane van Giersbergen doing that no and thankfully that is not the case this is that straight up catchy heavy symphonic metal that i wanted and getting marsala to be a part of it as well who i haven't heard from in quite a bit of time i know she's a part of maya now but i just miss stream of passion so much and that is a band that i'm just so shocked you never checked out until we saw them at prog i know i know and i'm surprised you even remembered the check 
them out because as we've talked about in accountability so many times i'm a free. just see, just seeing a band live doesn't mean you're gonna go check them out so i'm glad that was one example where that did happen and hearing their voices together the cleans the operatic vocals they need to form a band honestly mm. where they're both the lead singers like this shouldn't just be a one-off like i really enjoy their voices together and i want to hear more yeah um i, I will say the video is cheesy as cheesy can be it's a nice, oh of course it looks nice, like it's like slice of gouda um it's but, like xena well i don't mind that piece it's the pro- it. it's the production value of xena but um i absolutely love the song i love their voices together these are two of my favorite female vocalists out there um just medieval bad a queens that they are bad booty queens mm-hmm. maybe that should be episode of that is the name of our show <laughs> maybe well we'll see okay. but um we have to close the little black book for this week that is all the hot sexy singles that we covered let us know what you think of them and finally in case this show wasn't long enough <laughs> why we have 18 <laughs> album reviews to go through here Just without wait for next week kids Buckle no, 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 hey don't I'm bury not, the lead i'm not giving it away but i'm just saying well, okay freddy foreshadow i'm but, sorry but yeah uh we got 18 this week for out today and what i missed uh yeah this feels puny compared to what's coming next week now that you mention it uh we got 10 albums that came out back on friday and the rest of stuff that i've missed along the way uh starting things off is carnosis with worm tales uh this is a combination of some of the more extreme sides of death metal but they also add in some really catchy and mainstream moments that you really would not expect in this kind of album especially with the vocal delivery um being quite brutal you wouldn't expect all the stuff that they're doing here but um for extreme stuff i really enjoyed this one yeah um the singer looks like he's tried to summon satan a few times and the music matches but it's kind of catchy and there's some good guitar all right uh i'm sorry for butchering this one but hey you do what you can do um next up is capilla ardiente with where gods live and men die this is pure epic heavy metal epic doom metal done to an absolute t this is candle mass this is cathedral this is all those bands that really shine in the epic doom metal, epic heavy metal sound, just done a little bit different and a little more Italiano. I really enjoy this one. Yeah, I like this too. It's very catchy. It's like black and power metal. <laughs> With clean vocals. Or I didn't get any more. What, you said black. Black, black and, and power yeah. metal. Okay. Well, that usually implies black metal vocals. Uh, next up um, is one that I have to plug here. Uh, I did an unboxing for this particular album. The sophomore album from the band Deserts of Mars with Dead Planet exodus go on the youtube channel if you're not already on the youtube channel and look at my three and a half minute unboxing of the album and everything that came with it i got a very nice care package and if you want to check out my interview with tony from deserts of mars please go check that out as well um this is stoner rock stoner metal doom metal doom rock progressive rock heavy metal all done with this really huge sci-fi concept and it just intrigues me so very very much like it never gets too much of one particular style it knows how not to be boring which it can be sometimes in this genre this is not a boring album uh it intrigues me from beginning to end and just one of the finest displays i've heard in this style all year yeah I, it was catchy like it had those um kind of pieces of classic metal but like with mixed with a lot of other things um and the images on spotify reminded me of the vh1 stock footage they play when they used to play run to the hills back in the day <laughs> maybe that's where they got the inspiration maybe (coughs) (coughs) my apologies i had to do some gold dust there Ah, uh, next up um possibly one of if not the best album they've put out this is Insiferum with Winter Storm. Um, I am absolutely, utterly blown away by this album. It is the melodic death and folk metal that I know so very well from Insiferum, but with one huge difference. They started incorporating power metal. Their brand new keyboardist is also doing clean power metal vocals on this album, and I think it's exactly what the band needed before they became stale. Like, this brought new life into the band. They sound rejuvenized. It makes 
me want to go see them again because if this is what they're doing i'm so excited about what they're doing now yeah um every time i listen to it it comes closer and closer to being my favorite insafirum album yeah i absolutely love it i mean i i've loved insafirum for a while now but they've always been just one of those folk bands that you know you can see on any pagan fest or heathen fest or whatever and once you know it, they're basically doing a pagan fest knockoff in a few months <laughs> right but like adding in power metal like it's just as catchy as it can be like mm-hmm, i love this book. just keeps getting better and better and it's speaking of a band that just keeps getting better and better is the italian power metal band known as frozen crown with our fifth album war hearts they really found their sound on this album they figured out what works in the band and they've nailed it they maxed it out um, of course, you are you might be able to find some Dragon Force influences and other stuff on here. Like, they get quite speedy on this album. But it's done with an authenticity in this style that Dragon Force simply doesn't have. Um, everyone involved in this band, it feels like this is the music that they want to create, not the memes that they want to make. So, yeah, if you're burnt out on Dragon Force but you still like that sound, hear it from a very different perspective with Frozen Crown. Yeah, I'm really liking what I'm hearing here. I've, I've liked their music in the past too but this is like super catchy dynamic i love her vocals so it, yeah it's just really good uh next up in the complete and utter opposite direction we have the brand new album from funeral with gospel of bones uh just like the name implies this is funeral doom metal it is gothic doom metal but they incorporate two new styles that the band has never explored before folk and orchestral and i think it just works so perfectly with what they're doing here uh their brand new singer is uh Norwegian opera singer with a very low baritone voice that just fits so perfectly with the sound. There's no screams, there's no growls on here. It's all clean vocals. Uh, the guest appearances on here are so killer. Um, I know Funeral Doom and Gothic Doom isn't for everybody, but if you check this one out, you just might be won over. Yeah, I like it. Like, I really love the violin and the acoustic parts, uh, acoustic guitar parts, um, but gothy, doomy. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Haha, you like Funeral Doom. Gothy, Funeral Doom. Uh, next up is the latest album from Immortal Bird with Sin Corencia, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm terrible at Spanish. But uh, this is the latest album from this trio, and it's oddly the most technical and brutal album that they've done, but it's also kind of the catchiest album that they've done at the same time, which makes absolutely no sense, but they found a way to make that happen. Um, this is not going to be for everybody. It's grind, it's tech death, it's blackened, it's death metal, it's all those things rolled up. And if you only like a certain combination of those things, this is going to be a lot of ear fatigue, like someone sitting to my extreme left. But for me, I find a lot of solace in it. I love how you say I'm to your extreme left when I'm on your right side. Well, it is my extreme left. Is that not just, my extreme left? That's just such a dumb way to say it. it makes you laugh. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is not for me. It's too harsh. It's too technical. I, I I don't know. No. Right on. Well, next up is the debut album from this Australian band known as Star Crazy with their self-titled album. This is 70s funk, 70s and 80s glam, and Rush combined together. It's like listening to Wild Cherry, Rat, and Rush combined. Not necessarily the song that you heard, but if you hear the entire <laughs> album, it's, it's a trip. They also have a song called The Ballad of Philip j fry which i appreciate it's uh, <laughs> of course it's a complete and utter song about futurama a uh, very acoustic ballad as well too um yeah um i'm gonna let the metal fairy trash this one and then uh, we'll go into the next one yeah i mean for the song that i listen to it was very 90s trying to be 70s they probably drive a white van that has a hot leaf flag and some black lights <laughs> that gives away absolutely nothing i think that gives away everything <laughs> well next up is one of the most polarizing metal albums of 2024 at least in a specific subgenre. It is Swallow the Sun with Shining. Of course, you should check out my interview for Swallow the Sun, which is up on the YouTube channel. My only interview this year to get over a thousand views, so, you know, that's all the more reason to go check it out. Mm -hmm. This is not even the lightest Swallow the Sun album. That goes to uh, Songs of the North 1, 2, and 3, specifically 2, which is mainly a post-rock, acoustic, progressive rock kind of feel. This one has a lot of 
of mainstream production. It has a lot of uh, more catchy style riffs and song structure. The producer of this album has done the latest A Day to Remember and Blink-182 albums. You really don't expect that from Gothic Doom, do you? <laughs> it, it is quite the trip. But with that said, every time I listen to this, I fall in love more and more. If their previous albums are Black Clouds, this album is a silver lining. I think it's the closest thing so all the sun's ever going to get to a positive album and it's not positive it is still very very dark but their previous two albums specifically are some of the darkest albums i've ever heard in my entire life so hearing something a little more positive i think was a step in the right direction um yeah for me musically i liked it very catchy moody emotional <laughs> picture of them on spotify though it looked like they lost their moms at the mall and they need a security guard to rescue them you are such a jerk i'll rescue them and finally for the brand new stuff that came out back on friday is the latest album from Vionity with the final element one of the best power metal albums of the year it's the cheesy power metal that you know and love it's not a meme power metal band it's not a, the serious deep thinking power metal it's right in between it's just fun to listen to whether it gets very speedy whether it gets a little more emotional ballady just every song is done with such an authenticity that i love so very very much and um, just like their previous album that i loved so much this continues on with that um, trajectory and more people need to listen to them. Yeah, I agree. They're so petty and this is no different. Like, they're they're fun. They have amazing guitar. But they're, to your point, like, it's not so, like, fun that it's, like, hokey or silly or a joke or anything like that. It's just, it gets you going. It puts a smile on your face. It puts a smile on your face. Exactly. All right. Now for everything I've missed along the way, which is the whole point of Up Today and What I Missed, starting off with the brand new album from Glenarius with The Stars Will Light The Way. I did didn't realize this was their 17th album in 23 years. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will say that if you've never checked out the band before, I think this is a perfect starter album because it kind of feels like a best of with brand new material. Like all of the formulas that you love about the band are on this album in strides. It's super fast. It's super catchy. It knows when to slow down. It knows when to hit all the right moments. The vocal lines are just absolutely insane. The guitar solos are jaw dropping. Just Japan has a way of making power metal put a smile on your face, but kind of like we we were just talking about with Vionity. You can't make this hokey. It's not a meme. It's not any of that stuff. It's just when you put this on, you feel better. Well, if you like power metal. <laughs> yeah, I love Galnerius. Um, they're so catchy, fast paced. To your point, like Japan, they just know how to make elite power metal. <laughs> and this is, this is no no excuse. Yeah. All right. Um, well, those good times are about to end with the brand new yes, album from are. Godspeed You Black Emperor with no title as of 13th February 2024. 28,340 dead. That is one heck of a title, but it refers to, at that very point in the beginning of the year, how many people have died between the war of Israel and Palestine since it got restarted. Yeah. This is a very politically driven band. They've always been. And from the sound clips and everything else that they do, you can pretty much tell where they stand when it comes to everything that happens in war, politics, and all that stuff. They are the definition of very long-winded post-rock. Some people will never get into that. Some people love how it is like an escalator where it just constantly grows and grows and grows. Then it drops down and then comes back up and stuff like that. I'm basically looking at the Metal Fairy right now because uh, I'm just describing her vision of hell right now. Well, I could use that for a lot of different genres, but I won't say this is the best Godspeed album, but I think if you enjoy post-rock, this one is worth your time. I almost fell asleep multiple times listening to this um it went from boring to jam band it's just a whole lot of no they're not jam band I well they sure sounded like it okay well, next up, we're going into another instrumental band, but in a completely different direction. This is the band Master Boot Record with Hardwares. A concept album, even though it's instrumental, about all of the different components of a PC. From the RAM, to the CPU, to the case, and so much more. Uh, Master Boot Record basically wrote, well, they always do, but this sounds like the music a PC would make. Like, it's synthwave, it's heavy metal, every song on here feels like it's a song 
song that describes the component the title is. It's really, really fun to listen to. And if you're a nerd, you'll enjoy this one. And considering the rising costs of consoles and, you know, charging almost a thousand dollars for a new PlayStation, maybe I'd just be better off building my own PC. Yeah, I mean, based on the name and the concept, you would think I would hate this, but it I is, sure would. It is very catchy. Like, I feel like this would be perfect for like an 80s soundtrack. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, next up is the first album in 20 years for this band that's been around for 40 years. My uh, brand new album from Nasty Savage with Jeopardy Room. And this is another interview that I've done with Nasty Ronnie just two days after Tampa got destroyed by Hurricane Milton. I am just going to say it right now. I don't think we should have done this interview. I think we should have waited. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is a GoFundMe for the band who lost 90% of their equipment in the hurricane. So uh, look up Nasty Savage GoFundMe if you feel like you want to support them. Uh, This album kind of goes back to what they were back in the day when they were a little more glam metal and power metal but this also has like a dark thrash edge to it as well like if nevermore was into bdsm they would be nasty savage and i think there's no better way to describe them than that Oh, that's an image. Um, it's fine. Like it, it has that nasty sound to it, you know. So they live but up to their name. They live up to their name, but it just—it's not for me. It's not me. What about the one song with the girl on it? I mean, if it's funny, but I'm not gonna sit down and listen to that on repeat. You could I'm not stopping you. I am stopping me. Thank you. <laughs> all right, uh, now going from Tampa all the way to Egypt with the latest album from Odious with Equilibrium Tool. This is one of the most sophisticated metal albums I've heard all year. It is septic flesh. It is rotting cry. It is Flesh God Apocalypse. It's all these very sophisticated, symphonic, black metal, and death metal bands with some progressive death metal thrown in to create one of the most grandiose albums I've heard all year. Maybe they might be up their own butt a little too much, but I don't care. I love the final product. Yeah, I really liked it too. I mean, it's like you're settling in for a night at the symphony, but then there's harsh, like tons of harsh aspects. There's like Middle Eastern influences. Like, yeah, it's great. Or um, since they're in Egypt, it's uh, just influences i'm getting tired (laughs) thankfully we only got three left um now going from egypt to germany we have the latest album from samas trom with kolk which i think is how you pronounce it um this is another one of those sophisticated albums but this one has a particular gimmick to it that i've never seen another band do and i'll explain that in a minute but this band is like symphonic black metal symphonic death metal gothic metal all thrown together and what makes this a a different gimmick is there's different versions of this album production wise there's the original version that sounds very raw and underground like it is like a full-on black metal album Uh, there's another producer who did one that's made this very bass heavy it almost kind of feels like it has like a rock production style to it and mr dan swano did a mix of the production on this one as well making it sound the most grandiose where you can hear everything that's going on if i ever formed another band i want dan swano to do the mixing and mastering (laughs) because he's just the best at it yeah um that's the version that i listen to the most and i think it's the best version of it and i really love what this one man band is all about yeah i heard a song from the dan swano version as well it's harsh but it's catchy and glassy and like being sung in german it just sounds evil (laughs) very very i mean german does sound the most evil of all languages right (laughs) so much nine it should be a Ten. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, next up is Siren Oath with Loveless. When you hear this title, you think of like an Italian power metal band. They're they sound like they're going to be opening Prague Power next year. It, it it just sounds like they write about angels and demons fighting each other. That is not the case whatsoever. This is post black, very emotional post black. Which more bands are doing more, and I think it's the right direction. Um, you know, Deaf Heaven when they were doing post black, they just wrote about anything and uh, very obscure references. I like it more when the lyrics actually have a meaning behind it, and that's what this band is all about. Um, Yeah, just some fine quality post-black metal. Yeah, this was not at all what I expected from the name. (laughs) 
Like, there's some catchy things about it, and it, the vocal lines were very interesting, I thought. But eh, it didn't hit me that hard, though. No. Well, hard carry for the sky, did so I'm, get, I'm getting you slowly into post black. Slowly but surely. And finally, we end with one that I'm surprised I didn't get to sooner. It is the brand new album from Wolf Brigade with Life, Knife, Death. This is black metal and crust punk thrown together and some death metal thrown into there. It's short, sweet, you know exactly what you're getting. It's just really fast cr- crust punk level black and death. What else do you need? Um, yeah, there's some some catchy stuff. I, I think it's good for the right mood. Like, I'm feeling a bug or something. And once you know what you did <laughs> during this. I know, you did. Just to give everything away. And to give everything away, we are at the end of the show. Thank you so very much for tuning in and checking out episode 67 of the Heavy Debriefings podcast. Next week will be episode 68, and I can't wait for that one because we're going to be covering at least one typo negative album. Yes. But if you thought this show was long-winded, and it's the longest show that we've done to date, yeah. hold on to your hats for this one. Out today and what I missed for October 25th, 2024, will feature 30, no, you heard that right, 30 album reviews. Oh my god. You okayed this. I, I asked you if I it was know. okay to do this. And I know. So any complaining from you next week about how long it takes this is on you. But there was just that many albums I wanted to cover, so, you know, I'll break it down. Um, yeah, tune in next week for all of that and of course everything else that we'll be covering next week. Check out Heavy Debriefings and all the social media sites and of course YouTube. We're almost at 1,300 subscribers. We're so very, very close. So it'd be really cool to get the 1,500 by the end of the year. That is a freaking pipe dream, but hey, why not? I didn't think I was going to be getting almost 80 in one month. So hey, maybe it's possible. And for a very despondent metal fairy, this <laughs> is Josh Ronquist for the Heavy Debriefings podcast saying in Brace the skillet. This has been the Heavy Debriefings podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow Heavy Debriefings on all your favorite social media sites Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Threads. And of course, heavydebriefings.weebly.com for all of your Heavy Debriefings needs. Also, check out The Metal Fairy at Facebook.com at The Metal F A E R I E. Until next time, 